Welcome back to the James Bond experience here on World Class Bullshitters. And tonight, we're going to cover what used to be my favorite film and what is arguably the greatest film in the James Bond franchise from Rush With Love. And I'm here tonight with the last standing Samoa, Nick Utam. I like my martinis real dirty. Real fucking dirty. <laughs> Just like I like the ladies. <laughs> hey, Kendo Slice. I wish I had a license to kill. I'd get a lot of use out of it. <laughs> <laughs> When my mom was a bartender in the 90s, she used to tell me that she had a license to chill, and then she would laugh, and I would just stare at her like, no, mom. <laughs> Props to your mom for making an effort, though. What? She used to also say, if you smell it, the mom is bacon. Oh, I'm, like, I'm like, all right, mom, fine. <laughs> she's, she's had some good ones over the years. I'll give it to her. That's nice. At least she cared. She wanted to make young, young Jeff laugh. She wasn't some crack fiend. No, no, never. Never touched this stuff. Not once. So, have you guys seen this James Bond flick? Yeah. Uh-huh. It was the yeah. second Bond movie I ever watched. Now, if now if, 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 if I'm mistaken, I think the, uh, the guy from Jaws is in this movie? Yeah, Robert Shaw. He's the bad guy. We will talk about him. Um, yeah, yeah, because I remember what... <laughs> that's true. Yeah, uh, I remember watching this, and I was like, "That's that. That's like that's the fucking boat guy from Jaws. What, what is he doing being Russian in this?" <laughs> well, Come, that's and, how he ended up on the boat in Jaws <laughs> because James Bond chased him away, and he changed his name to Quint and became a fucking boater. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'll I'll, I'll allow that. That that sounds yeah. good. I'll, I'll take he it. Out, yeah. he, you know, he outed his secret identity as a as a Russian, and so he had to go into hiding before the KGB got him. <laughs> So he became a fisherman in Maine. Yeah, he changed his name to Quint, moved to Maine, and went out fucking getting bigger boats. <laughs> until and one he, day. Until one day he got eaten. By a fucking shark. <laughs> right. God damn it. So I uh, have played the video game of this, and... What? 2005. Yeah, there was a 2005 video game. It was the last... I think the last thing Sean Connery ever did. He came back to voice James Bond in 2005. Oh my god. Yeah, um, the game's... Okay. I mean, <laughs> it's okay. In back in the two, early 2000s when EA had the license to James Bond, actually in 1999 they got it. For all the turmoil that EA is going through now, I liked all the James Bond games back in the day. They were fun. They weren't perfect, but it was cool growing up when I did or when we did because you could be a James Bond fan. You could go to the store and buy the movie, but you could also go to the video game section and you could always find a new James Bond game. If you're a kid growing up nowadays and you're into James Bond, the only thing you'll ever find at the store will be the Blu-ray box set, which is, you know, really expensive if you're a little kid and you want to watch the Bond movies, so... Yeah. $75 on Amazon. <laughs> well, we had something cool, and that From Rush With Love game was fun. I do miss the era where this was my favorite Bond movie, because I used to go on and on about how much I loved it. Well, I mean, like, there were, okay, so there was Goldeneye, and there was Rush With Love. What are the, I know there were, like, two more games, right? Or one more game. Oh, God, there's way more than that. Tomorrow really? Night. Even if we just start with, we'll just start with Goldeneye. There's Goldeneye, Tomorrow Never Dies, there's two different copies of The World Is Not Enough. There's Agent Under Fire, there's Night Fire, there's Everything or Nothing, then came from Rush With Love. Then there was Quantum of Sol or Casino Royale, no, Quantum of Solace, which had Casino Royale storyline in it. There was Goldeneye Rogue Agent, 007 Legends, Bloodstone, 007 Racing, all kinds of games. I'm missing oh some at this point. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I have missed so many games. The shit was back in vogue, man. They had to make money. Yeah, 007 Racing was shit, but I had it. <laughs> Came out in the year 2000. My mom got me two games that Christmas for the PlayStation, Spider-Man and 007 Racing. And Spider-Man was one of the best games I've ever played in my life. And 007 Racing was bullshit. And uh, the only cool thing was it had like a CGI Pierce Brosnan in the game. So <laughs> we all love Pierce Brosnan. And any time you get more Pierce Brosnan as James Bond, I'm happy. Plus, you should check out, Nick, there's a game called Everything or Nothing where Pierce Brosnan voiced James Bond. And it's essentially the fourth, no, sorry, the fifth James Bond movie starring Pierce Brosnan. And it's a much better send-off than Die Another Day was. All right, folks, well, this is a commentary. You can listen to it as a podcast, but it's always more fun when you have the movie for context. So what you can do is you can get your Blu-ray, your DVD, your Laserdisc, your VHS. I don't know if this is on Betamax. <laughs> what you can do is get your shit set to zero and press play right. No, God damn it, no! And you're, you can probably hear the MGM. Yeah. As Very soon scary. as the James Bond gun barrel hits, then I'll tell you to turn it. Now, Nick... 
Mine says United Artists. Yeah, you're you're as well. The the you probably should have waited. <laughs> uh, take t- Kenny, take yours to thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, no more dick. Thirty seconds. All right, I'm at twenty five right now. Seconds. Yeah, um, I'll 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 let you know what Kenny where we're supposed to be. All right, I'm sitting at thirty four. You should press play by now. James Bond's walking down some stairs. Yeah, go to uh, f- like hold on, go to like fifty five. Okay, I'm at fifty five. Good. All right, you're 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 pretty much there then. So they had to film this part, uh, part twice. Okay. By the way, listeners, there's this really raw, uncut from Rush with Love commentary that came out on the Laserdisc set back in the early '90s. If you can find it, download it. It's the best thing you can find for this movie because it's the guy essentially is like, I don't want to be known as a faggot and all this shit. He says all this off color shit that wouldn't fly nowadays, <laughs> but it was fucking hilarious to is hear. Is it? So. I, I wonder if it's on my DVD or not. Oh, no, no, no. It's only on the Criterion Collection Laserdiscs. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they only did three. They did Dr. No from Rush With Love and Goldfinger. And I have them all downloaded, so... Oh, okay, okay. I, was, I was about to say, if anybody has them downloaded, please send them to Jeff. But if you have oh, them already, that's fine. Oh, yeah, dude. It, it's me and it's James Bond. You know my shit. <laughs> so there's your it's buddy like, from it's like, it's, it's like it, It's like me and Scooby-Doo, man. I, I got it all. I got it all. <laughs> I don't blame you. Scooby-Doo's a lot of do fun. Do you have Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, so that was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Would you would would you like it? Yes, I would. Okay, you'll you'll have it tomorrow. Fucking a. <laughs> Could you imagine watching this in the sixties? This is such a bizarre opening. It is, but it's like I would love to go back in the sixties and be in the, be here, be in the theater opening night and watching this. That would be fucking amazing, and everything would be way cheaper. Yeah, like <laughs> ten cents. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole night would cost me a dollar. All right. <laughs> I'm just making sure I'm where I'm at. The guy's pulling a string out of his watch. Yep. All right. Yeah, dude, you're right. not. You're, you're, James you're, Bond's yeah. about to be choked right here. Yep, and he's getting choked. Yep. Oh my god! Did they just fast forward that? Yep, dude. <laughs> there's so much fast motion in this movie. Now he's being choked on mine. <laughs> Speaking of Spanish, might be a second or two behind. <laughs> you, yeah, you you are just just a couple seconds, man. Fuck. I would love a watch like that. With with with, with garage wire. Yeah. Now pay attention to this balding man right here because he shows up as another character in James Bond movies. His name is yeah. Now, now check this out. Originally they had a different actor underneath this mask who didn't have a mustache and it confused the audience so they went back and reshot it. <laughs> I think I finagled my way to be on point with you guys. Alright, from Rush with... I love uh, this shit, you're the best part of the song. Yeah. Yeah, the chick dancing. So this is a different guy doing the credits this time. His name's Robert Brownjohn. Last time with Maurice. That's Binder. like okay. That's the thing I I fully enjoy about the Bond movies is the beginning credits, especially the ones from the early days because they are so. Especially this one. This is so crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. And it's it's it's. I love it. It's it's insane. <laughs> I think the re- the way it came into pl- uh, creation was the guy's wife walked in front of a projector and he got the idea from it. So. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the guy's wife started belly dancing for him in this little thing, and he was like, hey, 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 hey. That's a good wife. That baby got the sparkly thing and started dancing. You see the lady's leg hair. Not that I condone that type of thing. Now, coming up here is a typo. You see where it says Martin Beswick? Uh, Yeah. It's supposed to say Martin Beswick because it's a woman. (laughs) Oh, I will point out who Martin Beswick is. <laughs> She's a very attractive woman who's actually in Thunderball as well. Code but Princess Thunder. Layla's in this movie. Who? You can see at the very bottom where it said, said and said and Layla. Oh, that's the other girl that fights. So I said Princess Layla, making fun of all the dipshits in the comment sections. Oh yeah, I forgot. <clears throat> Shout out to those folks. Not really. Dickheads. You know what, Nick, you brought up about loving these credit sequences. What I love about the credit sequences is the fact that when these movies are over, they have, like, 45 seconds of, like, James Bond will return, and then it's over. Like, completely over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's my favorite part of the theme. Where I, also, I also I love that this is, this is the, like, the, the tamest attempt at, like, having women in the beginning. Because all, all, oh, the, all, all the other ones, they've been naked, but they've been shadows. This girl is, is like, pretty much, it's pretty well clothed in her, like, you know, belly dancing outfit. 
But, like, you're just seeing arms and, like, thighs and, like, things like that. Wait till we get to Thunderball where you can see Bush yeah. floating yes. in the water. <laughs> We're getting there sooner than you guys think. Don't worry. Terrence Young, the man that made James Bond, James Bond. Yeah, yeah, he, he, did, he, he did, like, the first, what, four or five, right? Now, he did uh, Dr. No, this, and then Thunderball, and then he okay. was done. Because okay. somebody else came in for Goldfinger. Gotcha. Which I guess is good, because look what Goldfinger did for the franchise. Yeah, it, it was... It what yeah, it, 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 gave it, it gave it its little, its little boost, so... <clears throat> I think this would be a hard sell to try to turn people onto James Bond movies today with this one. Well, I mean, you know, the the 60s, you know, the the era was different. You had slower movies, you know, um, slower plots, things like that. People, you had to really bring people to the theater and things. You know, TV was becoming a big big part of society as well. So it was difficult to have them come out and, you know, watch something like this. Plus, I think, <clears throat> well, I mean, they might they might have done it, especially if you, you know, um, kept showing, you know, Russia's, Russia, were, Russia was the bad guy and, you know, <laughs> things like that. They would have loved that. So it may have sold better than I thought. Well, my thing is nowadays, modern audiences are just so stupid. Know, they have no attention. Yeah, stupid is the right word. They just have no attention span. And it's like, you know, this movie has great build <clears throat> and all kinds of stuff, but people are just like, ooh, James Bond doesn't appear for 20 minutes, blah, blah, blah. I, I, don't, I don't care. Where's the guns? Where's the tits? I think we should do a show, like a live broadcast from a chess tournament sometime. <laughs> for 12 hours because that's how long we last well I, I, I feel like we're becoming modern python quiet stuff and then you got us oh shit it's a symbol yeah <laughs> from the, uh, dude specter started in the first movie oh i know dr yeah. no worked for specter so they they had these seeds planted early but it's weird because when you get to goldfinger no specter whatsoever yeah it, it died out and you know you, you had you had a good organization you could have done a lot with it you could have really you know well, they, they're in thunderball and f- okay. They're in the next like oh, after Thunderball or after uh yeah, after Goldfinger, they're in it from Thunderball through when Roger Moore starts. Gotcha. Yeah, so Spectre and Blofeld are probably well, I guess you could argue it's Bond's greatest villain just because of the uh amount of appearances for Blofeld, but ah uh, yeah, he is cuz he killed his wife and shit. But we'll get there in a couple movies. So this was like uh this mimicked like a real chess match or something and this was like a big deal back then because you know people cared about chess in 1963 true drinking game chess is better oh shit I know what you're talking about no 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 battle shots is better we should all dress up as specter agents for uh, Halloween one year there we go (laughs) black turtlenecks and all that shit Dude, I, I I want you guys to come down for Dragon Con so bad so we can just all dress up and go to go to the convention all four days. I'm awesome. down. Day. Just tell me the days. <laughs> it's next year, but yeah, I'll go. <clears throat> I, I really I really want to do I really want to do Ghostbusters so bad because that's just fitting for us. Somewhere like Peta is upset. Yeah, I'm about to say I was like, <laughs> this is before well, Peta. Get in your time machine and be offended in 1963. I bet this movie won't have the whole no animals were harmed during the filming of this thing at the end of it. Dude, in Friday the 13th, they chopped a snake in half for real. Yeah, dude, they really really did. It's a snake, though. No one cares about those. So you see the guy that's playing Blofeld, the set of hands? Yeah. That's the guy from Dr. No, that professor that James Bond shot in the bedroom? Yeah. That's him. Really? And he'll come back for Thunderball as well. Jeez. Now, dude, when we get to the first appearance of Blofeld, your buddy Donald Pleasance plays him, so it's kind of bizarre. Well, Donald Pleasance would also play the president in, uh, what is it? Um, Escape from New York. Escape from New York, thank you, yeah. That's a great movie. <laughs> Next year, dude, Schlocktoberfest is an ode to John Carpenter. Yeah. We need we'll to do this. every John Carpenter movie. I'm in. Because there, there are really so many good ones. We should have a it's hard to find a bad one. Since he's like the patron saint director of our show all of a sudden, we should, we should dedicate a month to Richard Donner. He's the patron saint of world-class bullshit. <laughs> Richard Donner. Oh, Richard Donner, how we love thee. <laughs> can, we, Richard Donner. Can, we, can we get penance made? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll design them. We're going to have t-shirts, so this... we're going to have hats and berets. It's going to be great. Berets. I vote berets. <laughs> 
I really want a Spectre ring. I would love to get one of those. I'm sure you can find a replica somewhere. Oh, I know. I just... I don't wear... I don't wear jewelry. It would just be cool to have a box when you, know, you open it up and you're like, yep, I'm a member of Spectre. <laughs> If, if, if only, if only, if they come with like you know a good health plan and dental. Oh, they do because you could die at any moment, so they're okay. gonna you live it up while you're around. <laughs> Your life insurance premium, however, is fucking murder. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like, wait, what profession are you in? Yeah, your your policy is gonna be at least five thousand a month. <laughs> We're not paying out anything over ten. See now this goes to show you that this film is not a direct sequel to Dr. No, but it it's one of the few Bond movies that acknowledges the previous outing. Because every other Bond movie just, like, happens. Yeah. This this one, it's like, well, remember last time? And then people were like, oh, and then once you get to Goldfinger, that's out the window. <laughs> Maybe Goldfinger I... almost feels like its own separate entity, which is fine. But Dr. No and From Russia With Love feel like a, a duology, if that's the right word to use. They feel yeah. like a continuation of the same story. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Ooh. Those are some very Aryan people right there. <laughs> the you know, best. even by today's standards, she's still got an all right... Eh, she's got a nice body. She's just got terrible, like, diaper underwear on. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I, I, she's... I don't know. She's really tan and she's kind of blonde. It looks really weird. Like, the whole... Yeah. I don't know. It's weird, but she's still hot, though. <laughs> yeah, we'd all bang her. Oh, yeah. Even now, when she's, like, 85. She would be 85. This movie's 53 years old, or 54 years old. Yeah. She's no honey rider. <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> Back to this guy, though. This Walt, The bald guy's name is Walter Gotell. He plays General Gogol through most of the Roger Moore movies. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it's kind of weird to see the same actor play. It's like uh, Joe Don Baker, the guy that plays Jack Wade in Goldeneye and Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah. He plays the bad guy in The Living Daylights, Brad Whitaker. So. Yeah. <laughs> He's also in Fletch, by the way. Oh, God. I'm going to find a way to tie every James Bond movie into Fletch. Every James Bond? It's on my 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 well, no, actually, this. actually, if, if you tie one, you tie them all because they're all continuous, so you win. There we go. Well, I'm going to try each unique one. Okay, okay. Six degrees of Fletch. Six degrees of Fletch. You should, dude, you should, you should make a chart. I will. I'll put it on Twitter. <laughs> you guys remember that scene in Wayne's World where Wayne opens the door and he says, I've always wanted to open a door where people are training like in James Bond movies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. What the hell is that? This flamethrower guy? Yeah. <laughs> like, people, he's, yeah, he's got them running across the guy. Ready? Ready? Go. There's Don't the only burned. black guy in the movie. Don't get burned. <laughs> And they're going back through it. What the hell? Wow. <laughs> that was a weird cut. They should have they should have reversed those cuts. <clears throat> Tiny little towel. <laughs> I hope he's wearing more than that towel. It's weird to think, I know this is an odd observation, but like in nineteen sixty three that was considered like peak male physique. Nowadays, that's like two steps above dad bod. <laughs> you're, you're right. <laughs> you, just, you just punched him in the ribs, <laughs> brass knuckles, and nothing broke. <laughs> I was like, oh, you bitch. <laughs> it's going to bruise later. Oh. Now, now tell me if you pick up on the lesbian undertones of this scene coming up. Because in the book, there's Danielle Bianchi. She's still alive. Still looks alright, too. I mean, she's old, but she aged well enough. She doesn't speak English, either. She doesn't? So they had to dub, dub all of her lines? She's dubbed in this... Ursula Andress was dubbed. She's dubbed. Uh, Claudine Auger from Thunderball's dubbed. I think they're all dubbed by the same woman, too. Probably, but what, what language do they speak? Gloria Vandersil. Oh, she's Italian. Ah, uh, okay. So, all right. She was like Miss Italy 1950-something. Not bad. Yeah, I mean... That's how they picked them back in the day. They won't read about the best actors. They just wanted the hottest women. And... Yeah, because they could. Yeah, they could do ADR and stuff like that. So they didn't give a shit. And you know, back then it didn't really, it didn't really matter because nobody really knew how movies worked that that well. So they were like, oh, they'll believe it. It's fine. So you know, that's just how it happened. Now every time a celebrity farts, we know about it. 
Yeah, look at Matt Lauer. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll really date this episode. <laughs> that'll really date this episode. <laughs> That's my new goal, is to say one sentence that will really date the episode. Like, oh, that was recorded on this date and time. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's nice about this Bond movie is Dr. No, while I love it a lot, um, it's real... It, once he gets to uh, Jamaica... The rest of the movies take the movie takes place in Jamaica. This one feels like your tr- classic Bond, you know, this globe hopping, grand sprawling adventure. Yeah, 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 exactly. Hero. Because I mean, that's and what I it's like supposed that. to be. It's, it's supposed to be that. It's like, all right, you know, the beginning you get the mission that he's finishing off, and then the song, and then it's just like, all right, on to the next crisis, on to the next global crisis. All right, you have to go here, then chase the guy here, then go here, then then here. You know, so, and it makes sense for him to do that because he's he's a spy, he's, a, he's an international spy, and he's supposed to chase the bad guy, and the bad guy's never in the same place twice. So, I mean, it just makes sense. God, this lady creeps me out. With the old lady? Yeah, apparently she was like a freak in bed, though. What? So, like, yeah. <laughs> how do we wait? wait. How it's do in you one of the know? documentaries they okay. talk about it. Okay. I, I don't know her. I didn't know her personally, Latte <laughs> Lenya. Yeah, well, I was, well, no, she I was I, dead by the time yeah. I was born. I know that. I'm just saying, like, how did you how did you know that she that, like you know, apparently she liked like butt stuff in bed? <laughs> well, Loudy has a, a long family lineage. Oh my you god. <laughs> by the way, the ladies that I ladies name that I said who voiced her is Nikki Vanderzil, not Gloria, so okay. just for the one person that would actually look that up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please please don't please don't message us about that. <laughs> I corrected it in a few minutes. And by the way, she's still alive. She's eighty two years old. She is. But I guess oh, I, I guess terrible. I guess she was mouthing the words the best she could and then they had somebody just ADR them later. Yeah, that's like Goldfinger. He's dubbed. He's dubbed? Yeah, go, that's not his voice. What does... Where's he from? Is he from Sweden or something? No, he's German. Oh, so it's okay. Heavy German accent then. Yeah, gotcha. Maybe she wasn't voiced by Nikki Vanderstil. <laughs> Ursula Andress was. Um, but she does <laughs> voice somebody in this movie. God, she's in... Wow, she's in most of the early James Bond movies. Nice. There we go. Another tie-in from the last movie. There's uh, Sylvia Trench. Yeah. That's rare for them to... God, Sean Connery. Ugh, he looks gross. Yeah, James Bond's showing too much skin. <laughs> anyway, back to her. It's rare to see a Bond girl come back. She was supposed to show up in multiple movies, like, even after this. Really? But yeah, she was supposed to be in Goldfinger, but the director didn't like the idea of Bond, like, going back to the same woman constantly. Uh, yeah, I, I understand that, because, you know, he's 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 a spy, and he's a playboy. You want you want him to kind of keep running through women, like, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> like he's supposed to, so, yeah. So in the books, he drove that Bentley quite a bit, and it was a big deal. But they only show it in one movie, and they get rid of it really fast by the time Goldfinger is in the well, next movie. His Bentley's gone, so... Yeah, then the Aston Martin becomes, like, the standard for Bond. Yeah, it's... that's... He drove that in, like... like I'm not gonna count right is now. That, is that... No, 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 no. Is the is Aston Martin... Is the Aston Martin... Um, is that, like... Uh, did that come, did that come in, in this movie, or does, does it come in later? Goldfinger, which is... Gotcha, the gotcha, gotcha. Because he walks into Q Branch, he goes, Where's my Bentley? And Q goes, I'm afraid it's had its day. Oh. And that's that's the end of it. Because I saw Goldfinger first, and I didn't know what he was talking about as Bentley. Oh, he's going to get some. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love him. He's just like, hmm. I'm I'm surprised that there haven't been like quite a few like Bond porn parodies. Honestly, like they're primed for that kind of shit. My uncle used to make this stupid joke about Goldfinger and call him Brownfinger. 
I was like, oh, I could have made, we could do some pretty uh, good James Bond uh, porn parodies. I would do brown eye instead of golden eye, which would be an all made <laughs> film set in Russia. <laughs> well, we'll have Lottie be the villain. <laughs> oh, God, he'll be Arumov. <laughs> oh, my God. We don't even have to change their names. She could still be Xenia on a top. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Loudy's bond name was Ernst Stavro Butt Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's his bond oh, name. God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. I'm trying to keep talking because I love this movie. I don't want to get lost in the story, but... I mean, this is probably... Real, this is the most, not the most important part, but this sets up the actual plot of the film. Yeah. It's all about the Lecter decoder. When I was in college, I tried. I was drawing a picture of James Bond, and he looked like Rod Serling instead. So <laughs> I failed that one, but I drew him again the next day, and it looked just like Sean Connery. There you At go. least it did for standards back then. <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird if Sean Connery was the last actor to survive playing Bond? Like everyone, including Daniel Craig, died tomorrow. Oh my God, that'd Sean be so Connery weird. Was like the last one. <laughs> He really is James Bond. <laughs> I was sad as hell when Roger Moore died. I was just like, oh. Huh. I was recording a video for the channel. I saw that and I went, oh. And then, you know. Yeah, on. yeah, because it, yeah, it, is, it is very sad. But, I mean, he was also, like, he, it's like he, yeah, didn't he, did he die of any, anything horrible? or I think he had cancer, but he was also, like, almost 90. So, it's like, whatever at this point. True. This is a cool, I think is the, what is this, this is the first James Bond gadget. Pretty cool. Yeah, there's. Oh. Fifty gold sovereigns. <laughs> Fifty gold that sovereigns. Comes, that comes into play later in the movie. You know, it makes me wonder what kind of gadgets real Cold War spies had because this seems practical. I know, um, I, I I know. There's like the spy museum in, in Washington where you get to see the stuff that they really used, and uh, there's a couple of shows as well. And one thing they had, one thing they had that was also always um, interesting were dead drops, and they used to have them um, where uh, they would they would put messages in dead rats to put them on the side of the road. Yeah. And that's how, and that's how they pass. That's how they pass message because you know you nobody would touch a dead rat on the road. So oh, that's boy. what they would do every now and again. And I mean, it was it was crazy. I mean, I, and you hear some of the stuff they did, man. It was just like, it was kind of you know, it's kind of like you had to know the language, you had to know the uh, the people, you had to you know, you had to know all the stuff just to survive. It was it was insane. I think we should go to that museum one day, Nick. I'm down, man. I'm down. You wanna you wanna do it one day? We'll roll through with the camera and just kind of have a, have a day. What we should do is we should record from the museum on the eve of the 25th Bond movie coming out. Come on, patrons. You can make that happen, guys. That's right, patrons. For just $5 a month, which equates to like 17 cents a day. Yeah. Something like that. You could feed a starving child in Africa, but who the fuck wants to do that? Wouldn't you rather see us go to the spy museum and we'll have video and it'll be cool as shit and you'll love it. Hopefully more of you watch that than the video where I did the Star Wars exhibit, but hey. <laughs> well, no, I was surprised because that one—that one got uh, quite quite a bit of views as well. So that made me happy. Here we go. This is clearly not Sean Connery writing because he has hair on his hands. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> this is somebody else. <laughs> From uh, I love this music right here. It's called James Bond with Bongos. I have the soundtrack. Okay, it's so on my phone. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just like a fucking Pan American. Pan, where, where's Pan American now? Nowhere. <laughs> well, it's because that guy blew that one up. Oh, jeez. But yeah, it's seriously, a band name: James Bond with Bongos. There's a ska version of James Bond. 
the James Bond theme. It's really popular. That's one thing. That's one thing I love about you know these movies and spy movies in general. You know, dated to the Cold War era, the fucking the the fucking the secret uh, passwords to each other that you had to say the passphrases. Like, oh yeah, I always love that shit because like it's always the like it's the most like obscure shit every now and again, but it's the most common stuff you'd like talk about normally. But you have to know the exact answer, or like you know you'll get shot. <laughs> I love the part in Goldeneye when James Bond goes up to uh, Jack Wade. He goes, "In London, April's a spring month." And he goes, "Oh yeah, who are you, the weatherman?" Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He goes, Look at you, another stiff ass Brit with your code words and your pa- uh, passwords and your codes or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> we need to have that stuff for the show. What? Code words? Yeah, code words and passwords. Like secret handshakes and shit. Like a real cult. Dion's <laughs> hand job is a secret password. Yeah. Did you see the Volkswagen bus in the background? <laughs> yeah. We're so fortunate that the James Bond movies start with such a high mark. Of Doctor No from Rush with Love, Goldfinger, Thunderball. That's, that's like we got four amazing movies in a row. That's one thing I love about the old sixties car scenes. Like oh, yeah. it's just it's just like film behind them because the light of the car doesn't change direction at all as they're moving around. No, <laughs> it's just like a scene behind them that's playing. I love it. Uh, you know what's I... sad though is like when you watch this remastered on Blu-ray, like Kendo and I are. This looks amazing right now. What you're seeing them walking through the squ- uh, square. But when you watch them with the back projection stuff in the car, it looks so bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once they put these out on 4K, I, <laughs> I will double dip and I will buy the James Bond. Oh, box oh my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's the only thing I'm going to double dip for. And I'm not even going to, like, take into the format really heavily. I just, it's James Bond, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've taken the blue air real heavily, but that's for, like, really old stuff that uh, has, that, you know, that has recently had a resurgence so well to get technical the james bond blu-ray box set only has a select few films that are remastered in 4k like this is one of them but when you get to the connor or the late or the Marjorie Moore ones and the brosnan ones they're just like an upscale dvd transfer and they're pretty bad and, oh man yeah because yeah because that's are you saying i bought a bunk blu-ray box set the other day i bought it too don't worry god damn it you know what? For, the, for our movie, we should put it out on Laserdisc. <laughs> if okay. you can find us somewhere to print it, I will Isn't that a, Winston, a Winston Churchill picture that this guy has in his desk? I believe so. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> I got a Winston Churchill t-shirt. You millennial. You are Winston Churchill. <laughs> I got it at the Imperial War Museum. It's him, like, standing there, and, like, with a smile on his face, and he's got a cigar in his mouth, and he's holding a fucking Tommy gun. <laughs> I guess it was taken when, you know, we sent Thompson's over there for them to, like, try him out to see what they were like. I'll, I'll wear it when I come to Ohio. <laughs> he was still alive when this movie came out. Winston Churchill died January 24th, 1965. And he was half American. Good for him. That was the good half that fought the Germans, though. I do, I, I do, I do love this 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 uh, older guy in them in this movie because he's so upbeat the whole time. <laughs> even when you want to hear something weird, even when he's getting shot at, he's so upbeat. <laughs> he was dying with cancer this entire film. What? I swear, I'm not making it up. Uh, his name's Pedro Almendarez. Oh my god! He was friends with the director, and this is the last thing he ever filmed. And if you watch later in the movie, he looks really strange because he's dying, and he was like on morphine and whatever else. And then after this movie was made, he killed himself. Holy shit! Yeah, it's, it was rough. He went out like a champ. He finished this movie so his family would have money and then went checked himself into the hospital in California and shot himself. Jeez, man. Well, I mean, you know, like, yeah, cancer's painful, so, I mean, I, I kind of, I, I, I sympathize. Yeah. Yeah, that's... He, uh, his son's in a later James Bond movie. No. Yeah, he's in License to Kill. He plays the general in Mexico. Oh, wow, that's that's awesome. This is an odd place to play the James Bond theme. Yeah. <laughs> like the original one too. I do, I, I do, I do love the, the, that whole guitar thing they have going on. I do, I do really love that. I love that oh, Vic version. Flick. Yeah. That, well, this is whenever I'm talking about the James Bond theme. This is the one I'm talking about. Okay. Because it's it's in a couple of the Connery ones, and then it shows up in um, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, and that's the last time you ever hear it. Yeah, I love I I, I love this version of it so much. It's uh it's it's. It's it's a it's a little dated. It's aged, but it's you know it's perfect, and you can't really take that away from it. Well, I think the twangy guitar adds to the cool. Factor it does. It, it does. Works. Yeah. 
To me, nothing's worse than when you pull up a Roger Moore Bond flick and it's got the stupid light, flighty orchestra like, dun, 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 with a fucking violin. Yeah. James Bond's a hard edged character, not a fucking light in the loafers weirdo like Roger Moore plays him in later movies, especially mm. fucking Octopussy. Oh, God. Wait till we get to those movies. I'm going to get belligerently drunk and <laughs> yell. <laughs> Fuck you, Steven Burkoff. You were better than Beverly Hills Cop, you son of a bitch. Just stuff like that, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Sean Connery was so cool. <laughs> All right. I've always wanted to go through a hotel and check it out like this, but by the time I usually get to a hotel, I'm tired or I want to drink. So <laughs> or you've paid five hundred five hundred dollars for a, for a stripper. <laughs> there you oh, go. Never. 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 <laughs> Here we go. Here's some old school spying. Now, if this was a modern film, he would just use a cell phone. Oh, 100%. 100%. And that kind of takes away the coolness. Like in uh, Skyfall when he's chasing down the guy because he stole a hard drive out of a computer. I'm like, you know, back in the day it would be like a decoding device or this or that. No, it's just a hard drive from a laptop. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, yeah, yeah, of, of course, yeah. But I mean, you know, like technology changes and things change, and you know, so they have to make they've kind of go with it. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a hundred percent that. And I, what I liked about Spectre, even though everyone likes to show, oh, Spectre's so bad. No, Spectre's not that bad. And secondly, Spectre mm-hmm. addresses all the problems people could uh, pose about James Bond, and it's refreshing. It's like, you know, wars were fought with computers and all this other shit, and we're like, well, sometimes we need a man to do it. We need a blunt instrument, so it makes James Bond seem relevant still, which is nice. Yeah. <clears throat> what a shitty taxi. <laughs> well, they're, they're they're in Turkey, I think. I'm sorry, they're in Russia. No, they're in Istanbul. Oh, never mind. I never want to go It used to here. be Constantinople. Now it's he Istanbul. Did. Yeah, going to, like, <clears throat> um, Eastern, Eastern Europe is always a bad idea. <laughs> Unless you want to get raped or murdered like in Hostel. Yeah, or kidnapped. And then raped and murdered. <clears throat> like in Hostel. Unless Liam Neeson's your dad, don't go. <laughs> we'll just all stick Come together. On. I think we'll be okay. This chick wanted to get plowed. She's got nice boobs. Very yes. nice. They're very nice. Wait till we get to Thunderball. We have the best rack. The s- well, it's debatable who has the best rack in all of the Bond movies. It's either her or the woman from uh, Diamonds Are Forever. Believe me, we'll go into great detail about the James Bond racks. But this lady is a <laughs> solid fifth place. Thank solid you, lady. Fifth place. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to like you know push out other contenders because I'm you know drawing a blank right now. But she's up there, even though she's not that big. They're very nice. Oh yeah. It's funny how some of the beauty standards of the 60s have come back like certain styles and weird shit oh yeah I mean that that's not always happens like the a lot of those fashions just get updated they don't really change I will put it out there we will never go back to shit from the 70s though like I don't think we'll ever see flared pants and big safari jackets and dumb shit like that no I mean some yeah I mean like the the stuff that was like, the basics of those chip fashion, fashions always repeat, but never, like, the extreme crap, so. There was a short no period one... of time around the turn of the century where, like, bell-bottom jeans kind of made a slight comeback, but it was very brief. <laughs> and it was for women, too. Yeah, because I remember there True. was a bunch of like, high school that, like, showed up one day. and like Well, no, no, yeah, yeah they, 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 they were called, bottoms and shit. Yeah, they were called Gen, Genco jeans or whatever. That's, that's what they were. <laughs> yeah, because I remember I went home and told my dad. I was like, man, these girls showed up and wear bell-bottoms up. He goes... What are they, fucking hippies? Go to school tomorrow and make fun of them. So I did. <laughs> and then I got- yes, sir. I didn't get in trouble for that one, though. I went home and told my dad. I was like, yeah, I got in trouble today for making fun of the girls with the bell bombs. He goes, good. My dad's cool. <laughs> I like how it makes his pocket square look like James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> well... James Bond's the best dressed dude in the room, and he's kind of jealous. Yeah. <clears throat> well, why didn't you just do that? Why didn't you just do that? He he pulls he pulls that that rug to one side and then pulls to the other. It's like, what are you doing? Hey man, he's got cancer. Leave him alone. Okay. Oh, 
I need to get one of those rugs with tassels to hang on my wall. <laughs> you mean you mean a tapestry? Yeah, just like out of nowhere, like my I got like pictures and like nice shit all over my walls, and like out of nowhere, there's just a fucking tapestry with tassels hanging on it. Well, I, I Karen <laughs> Bay looks like Walt Disney's fat brother. <laughs> he does. Dick Disney. He does. <laughs> Oh my God! Those uh, those rats the remind me of um, <laughs> the messenger rats. They remind me of um, Last Crusade. Last Cru- I think that's why they're in that movie. Because remember, he says about my dad hates him. He could have never made it past the rats. Oh shit! <laughs> I think it's like a callback to this. It could be. We don't know. It could entirely well, be. Because Spielberg Spielberg wanted to direct the James Bond movie back in the day, but they wouldn't let him. That was a mistake. To this day, no American's ever directed a Bond movie. Oh, that's... I mean, that's odd. It doesn't bother me. Dude, in 2006, it was going to be... There was a rumor that it was going to be Tarantino directing Casino Royale with Pierce Brosnan. Terrible idea. Could you imagine that? Uh, Dude, it would have... No, it would have been... I don't think it would have, because you got to take into account he doesn't have unfettered creativity with that. He has to work within a framework. Yeah. And he could probably bring back some rawness that it needed. Because James Bond went super hard edge in 06 and 08. And now we're back to like a, not a friendlier James Bond. He still will kick your ass, but he doesn't like slit your throat with broken glass and watch you bleed out. And then call it the <laughs> yeah, like, I'm so glad we're out of the early Daniel Craig era. I'm actually glad we're almost out of the Daniel Craig era in general. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a Daniel Craig fan at all. Like, Spectre still was, have not watched a single Daniel Craig. Yeah, movie. Spectre's okay. Like, I think it's a, the the better of his work, but I'm still like, God, just leave and give it to somebody else. I wish it would have been Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill, and then um, the other guy that uh, I like, uh, who plays Loki. Oh, Tom, Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston? I'd yeah, be okay. yeah. He no, Henry Cavill was number two in line. Oh, That's the only okay. reason I always use him. He was like, it was him and Daniel Craig, and they picked Daniel Craig. Poor choice. Well, that's the only reason I always bring up Henry Cavill. Not that I... I mean, I would have liked him because he looks the part. You know, he's even going bald like Sean Connery, so that works. But... <laughs> Plus, he's got the best of both worlds. Not only would he be a super spy, but he might try to get him, he could just shoot him with his laser eyes. <laughs> Superman, the spy. <laughs> super James Bond. <laughs> this is a weird concept. <laughs> gadgets? He don't need gadgets. <laughs> laser beams. You know, don't need no stinking gadgets. <laughs> this one, I guess that one will take place in South America, man. <laughs> yeah, Holmes. <laughs> now it's in East Super LA. Hombre. That'd be a good setting for a Bond movie, East LA. <laughs> hey, James Bond went to Harlem, so why not? <laughs> not sure Bond versus the... Cholos. <laughs> I'm not sure what James Bond would be doing in East LA or why he would get sent. E- Maybe Spectre. The Cholos. The Cholos have a. The Cholos have a nuke, and he has to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Spectre. Yeah, Spectre's got the Cholo unit. They're, they're, they they're hiding they, shit in their taco carts. They, they, they keep transporting the fucking nuke in those bouncy cars. And he's like, "Quit doing that! Don't, you're gonna set it the fuck off." I was going to try to come up with, like, a really genuine answer. Fuck that. Yours wins. <laughs> Cholo Nuke. That should be the name of the film. Cholo. Some woman sings Cholo Nuke. That's the fucking <laughs> lyrics. Instead of Gold Knights, Cholo Nuke. <laughs> Fuck it. We're making, our, we're making our own spy movie called Cholo Nuke. <laughs> if, I'm going to write Cholo Nuke down so I don't forget the words. <laughs> you know what? If we see that movie before we get done making it, we're going to find whoever was a patron at this time or any time, and we're going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, don't steal our shit. You know, we can't help it that you're a bunch of unoriginal fuckwads that can't come up with your own shit and you steal ours. I should just make a fucking like poster for. Well, it, it was like it was like with, with the pork giving video. Like apparently somebody wrote an article that was a recipe on how to how to uh, how to cook pork like the day after we made the video. Oh, we're sorry, the day after we posted the video. I'm I'm gonna which start is, the screen play right up video Cholo Nuke has any... <laughs> Can Cheech Marin play like the Mexican M? Totally. <laughs> oh, why not? Hey, I say here's what you gotta do, man. Uh, you just pull the trigger and shoot stuff. We are bitten to table. And then Ch- Tommy Chong will show up just out of nowhere to go, hey man, Cheech, Cheech. And then somebody's like, wrong movie, dude. He's like, oh, okay. 
<laughs> I want there to be a scene where James Bond and M are sitting discussing something. He goes, it's some sort of cholo nuke, and they just look at the camera for about four seconds. It's like a nuclear device. <laughs> on one condition, so on one condition, we have to get Denny Trejo in on this. It has to happen. Yeah, but, dude, that man has to be the bad guy purpose. because it's fucking Denny fucking Trejo. Yeah, he does those fucking cable commercials or whatever it is. He could probably get him. <laughs> I love that man. You I know that lady with one name? I think this is her. Princess okay. Layla? Yeah. Well, she's wearing the right outfit from Jabba's Palace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I've, I've, I've met Denny Trejo. Super nice guy. Super nice guy. Seems like it. I've always liked Danny Trejo shit. Oh, dude, yeah, he's, he's awesome, man. He's in everything, shit. And he's, self, he's it... self-aware, too. That's the best part. Nick, when we make oh, it yeah. to our big Hollywood movies, instead of having uh, prop alcohol, we'll just have real alcohol to throw the actors off. Yep. <laughs> so, like, when Leonardo DiCaprio's trying to, like, play a scene, he thinks he's about to drink a sip of water, it's going to be, like, Everclear. Not even vodka, just Everclear. It's like, oh, well... Yeah, oh, we're going pure grain alcohol. <laughs> I want Leo to be fucked up. <laughs> Tell me what it was like to fuck Kate Winslet. <laughs> Tell me now. <laughs> does she shave or, or, or does she? Or does, does she yeah, does full she grown, what? trimmed, or hardwood. <laughs> What's the scoop there? <laughs> well, she's in many movies bottomless, so we can find out ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, the thing is, when they go bottomless in the movies, a lot of times they have to be dictated what they do. Whereas now, yeah, I mean, uh, she 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 could have worn a merkin, man. Come on. Yeah, she she didn't because I read the interview. Don't worry, We're not, that's, that's a topic for another day. I love that. Yeah, I follow. So uh, the censors went crazy with this scene coming up where the two women fight because they said it was too risque. Oh, but but they but there's nothing about the belly dancing at all. <laughs> well, I'm sure they did as they sat there and stifled their erections. Yeah, it's a good looking woman with a nice body. How can you just be upset by this? Well, if anything, there should be more of this. I agree. As long as there's like, you know, I, 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 you know, as long as there's some penetration and you call it porn, it's fine. Like whatever, you know, do your thing. There should be more of this, and it should be wearing less clothes. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I think we're ready for an R-rated James Bond movie with just you know, women bending over. There's Martine Beswick, the first one that got out. Okay. Well, she doesn't look like she's supposed to be Spanish. Like they, well, they're gypsies. Oh, yeah, sorry, I mean, gypsies, it's just right. how fucking reality Frank lives. <laughs> that's that's Frank's grandpa in the pink shirt. <laughs> fucking, yeah, this fucking little gypo caravan going around his Grand, different camp. Grandpa Rivet. <laughs> yeah. In a van down by the river. In a van down by the rivet. <laughs> Yeah, this girl in the green top comes back for Thunderball. She plays Paula Kaplan, where she has a speaking role. Nice. She gets killed. <laughs> this reminds me of West Side Story. <laughs> I think this came out around the same time. Oh, shit. <laughs> God, look at those bloomer underwear. They're so I high. I know, I stuff. know. Like, no one's going to check you out on the beach when you're wearing a fucking printed diaper, but hey, you know. <laughs> it's the 60s, and a mid-drift is, you know, boner-inducing. <laughs> Apparently. The girl with the red looks like, you ever see My Name is Earl? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Remember Catalina? She kind of looks like Catalina in the face. Oh, yeah, that Nadine chick was Velasquez. sweet. Oh, yeah, Nadine Velasquez is fine. One episode where she like learns how to, like she learns how to learn to be jumping again or something like that, and it's just like thirty seconds of yep. her jumping up and down, like bouncing and shit, and wearing like this like skimpy outfit. That was good times. She won't jump, jump for joy, but she'll jump for Earl. Got a lot of fast forwarding going on. I think they're just trying to get through the upskirt shots. And here we go. I love how in these movies, all the good guys use the same fucking gun. It's James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> You're a good guy? Walter PPK it is. It's like, visual shorthand for a good guy. This is the 007 theme. This is a cool song. Jeez. I, now, this I is where the guy was that's the, the sickest. Thing I, that's the thing I love is, like, he's gonna put up a table because the bullets can't penetrate wood. 
We've I like shit like this where James Bond just like hit. Oh, look at look at the blood pack. <laughs> oh, damn. The funny thing is, you can like look at these. Like, oh, well, the gun was empty, by the way. Yep. So that's that's unforgivable. Fuck this movie. <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. That's it. I'm turning it off. Yeah, folks, this has been your From Russia with Love commentary. Uh, come back next time for Goldfinger, where they don't make these mistakes. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, and there's less gypsies, so <laughs> tune back in next next month where there's 100% less gypsies. Yeah, I'm making you a no-gypsy guarantee for the next five films. Five films, jeez. Maybe more. I don't think... There may not be any more gypsies in all of the James Bond franchise. Good, I fucking hate gypos. I actually have to think about that. Why would you ever fire your gun like that? It just seems so awkward. It yeah, is. He, yeah, he's firing it like you know, like from the hip. That's weird. Like you know, I, I I don't know how good your aim is at that point. Uh, when you're that close, I don't think it matters. That's a very <laughs> Sean Connery thing to do, though. That's like, true. He's the only Bond to really fire his. Well, gun no, no, he, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Well, he's, he's 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 got that Bond stance. That's that's what it is. He's he invented that stance. So that's what it is. He probably practices that shot a lot. Han Solo yeah. fires like that, too. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Han Solo was inspired by, oh, Harrison Ford. Like, well, it is his father. So. Probably. I love the subtitle, Yelling in Turkish. Fucking Turks. Goddamn Ottomans. What'd they ever do for history? <laughs> the fucking Ottoman Empire. Lot, lots. <laughs> Fantastic furniture. But whatever. Yeah, they look <laughs> good furniture that. and, you know, Turkish blended cigarettes. Oh, and coffee. It's true. They took out a bunch of Armenians. Sorry, Kim. Still not allowed in the... Speaking Turkish. Yeah, he healed him rather quickly. Man, that was a flesh hey, one, dude. You got shot through the arm. Here's a bottle of wine and a fucking... Sling. You'll be all right. Dude, he's dying of cancer. He has worse problems than a fucking th- through and through in the arm. Fair enough. He's like, he's like, but you're hurt. You've been shot in the arm. I'm fucking dying of cancer. <laughs> like, all right. That guy has to smell so terrible. Well, he's a gypsy. They don't shower. Ugh. Hope you like the smell of ass with your food. <laughs> That's how they bathe. And a small bowl. <laughs> this is so awkward. Look at these women. They're just like, ooh. <laughs> They're, they're trying to they're trying to look at him seductively, and they're they're kind of failing a little bit. <laughs> well, he's gonna take them both. Look at him. <laughs> they need to let Bond do well. They do let him fuck multiple women in each movie, so I can't really say they took that away from him. When I was a little kid, those parts just kind of, you know, I didn't really think about them. I was like, oh, I don't know what he did with them, but whatever. Now they're sewing his shirt. <laughs> uh, look at her she's like oh bye <laughs> <laughs> just watch her she's like, trying to wave it was so good James Jims. I will never see any of you again switch <laughs> <laughs> fuck the gypsy cam fuck these gypsies I'm not I'm not coming back <laughs> Yeah, no one wants to fucking hang out with them smelly ass fucking thieves. <clears throat> for some for some reason, my crotch burns. I don't know why. They give Bush a bad name. <laughs> yeah. If we ever do like top ten things that we like love and hate on my hate list, gypsies are going to show up at least once. Mine will be anime fans, but that's a subject for. Oh anime. God, that's also on the hate list. Maybe we should do that. A special patron. Ten things we love, ten things we hate. And it could be anything. Not, it's not entertainment based. That could be fun. <sighs> what are you drinking tonight, Kendo? I have a special thing from the Leaky Roof Meadery. We've been <laughs> drinking a lot of mead lately, and this comes from Buffalo, Missouri. It's called the uh, it's called Spook Light. 
honey wine with natural flavors. And it turns out it's actually a pumpkin spice mead. I did not realize. I bought it because it was called Spook Light. You're a white girl. <laughs> you basic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Spook Light is a real thing. <clears throat> oh, I, I know. What? I like mead. Fuck you. <laughs> Who you calling spook, pick a wood? <laughs> hey, man, I don't want to mess with the reefer addicts, all right? Better run to your mama. <laughs> Who you calling spook light? I think I need to reference Back to the Future everything we do. We need so to, we need to do, we need to do those movies, okay? We need to do those movies. Take, take a day. 18. Yeah, we need to do those movies, all right? Because we all, we, we already did one that we all love. We'll, we'll do, we'll do, uh, the whole trilogy will start at noon. I'm dead. We'll be done by I'm, like seven o'clock at night. Dude, I'm down for that. We'll be enjoying that shit, though. Oh god, yeah. I'm enjoying this. I love this movie. Oh yeah, it's good. Like it's hard for me to keep talking because I just want to pay attention to it. Uh, take in the scenery, the the score, Sean Connery being fucking cool, giving a shit. A really awkward looking pistol rifle. Hey, it's a. Uh... <clears throat> That's a... So, by the way, you can see the producers' names on the poster: Harry uh, Saltzman oh. and Albert R. Broccoli. So that's a real movie. Call me Buana. Is it? Yeah, you can Google it. It's Anita Eckberg was hot. Eckberg. Miss. Boom! Right in the back. You could have shot him multiple times by now. Eh, why would you? Well, he had a good headshot. Now he just shot him in the lower back. Yeah, but he fell off the thing and he's dead. Yeah. Well, but... I mean, and, and, and also if you shoot him in the lower back, you, you may have gotten his spine, and then he can't walk ever again. Yeah, but if you shoot him in the head, he ain't talking ever again. Yeah, and, and he can't he can't go back as a, as a zombie either, so that's good. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> this meat sucks. <laughs> it's pumpkin spice. I didn't know it was pumpkin spice. I bought it specifically because of the name. I'm like, hey, I like mead, and it's called Spook Light. That's cool. I know what the Spook Light is. And uh, yeah, then I read on the key, and it was pumpkin spice. I'm drinking. I was like, this tastes weird. It's it's not good at all. It's okay. All right. James Bond would drink it. I also have a bottle of Akavit that I was about to bust out, but I didn't. Nice. So here's a little <clears throat> insight. The reason I drink black coffee is because of this movie. I was like, I'm going to try coffee. And then I watched this. I was like, huh, James Bond drinks a black. I'll try it. Now I like it. So Plus you realize it tastes coffee. better than when you put all that fucking milk and sugar shit in there. I know. I'm, it's surprised, it's you, I'm surprised you don't do like, uh, what is it, like that cold brew stuff and get one of those little pictures for it. Oh, French press? No, cold brew. Oh, I just don't have the time for that. Dude, cold brew, you, there's a way to do it without even doing all that shit. I can tell you how to make a cold brewed coffee. There's his, There's James Bond's tattoo, by the way, on his right arm, on his forearm. See if you can catch it again. Cause he's, I think he's the only actor to have a tattoo. It looks like just a bunch of, like, hair. Shit. Yeah, but it's actually a tattoo. Oh, yeah, they have it covered up, yep. It looks, yeah, it looks really crappy the way they covered it up. <laughs> Thankfully, he's super hairy, so it doesn't look like for the nudity. There's some boobies. Oh, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, I, I see it, I see it. Yeah. Probably, probably like better, better in blue, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I think I saw a nipple. I saw it all, boys. Except I was there. for myself. I saw it all. Do you, do you need to go to the bathroom for, for a few minutes? What was she doing in that room that yeah, she knocked exactly. the chair? <laughs> we don't have fucking video on. I can just do it right here. <laughs> but Jeff, you want me to teach you how to make cold brew coffee? It's really easy. If you got a regular coffee pot, just fill it with ice cubes, then make a full pot of coffee with the grounds, and then just fill it half with water. So instead of twelve cups of water, six cups of water. Coffee brews, ice melts, cold brew. Hmm. Nice. There you go, listeners. That's a little bonus for you out there. <laughs> Learned how to do that when I worked at the bagel store because we had to make cold brew coffee, and it was real easy. The bagelry. Who was Einstein Bagels Brothers or something? Oh, we have that here. It 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 it's it sucked big time, but I worked with fun people, so we made it exciting. Yeah. I know she's trying to be sexy, and for the most part, she is. But that mouth shot was really awkward. Yeah, I yeah. get a shot. That's one of my bugaboos <laughs> in all movies. Yeah, that was a sorry. I right past me. I got it though. Come shot. Huh? Yeah, you totally. No, I hate when no soul being the shot. Woody territory. Yeah, well, I actually got what you're saying. Laddie just goes, uh, you know. <laughs> this had to be fun to shoot for Sean Connery. He's like, yeah, I'm kissing this hot woman. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, I, I, I didn't feel a thing. You got to do, like, 
three more times. Sorry, my erection's in the wrong direction. Sorry, let's, <laughs> let's reset my cock and we'll get back to it. <laughs> erection direction is, is important. Yeah. It's like, oh, I pressed up a your boobs that time. It felt uncomfortable. I need to try this again. Dude, you just touched your boobs again. Yeah, I know. I keep making that mistake. I didn't have my hand positioned right. Sorry, I'm not cupping your nipple properly. <laughs> this is about you, not me. So Bond just banged two gypsies that afternoon, and now yeah. he's picking up this hot uh, Russian. That's called the hat trick where I come from. Three <laughs> different chicks in one day. Yeah, I've never achieved that. No, I've, I've pulled off the double, but I've never pulled off the treble. <laughs> That's not awkward to be watched. <laughs> They're voyeurs. That was, that, was, that was so quick, too. Like, they, they just pulled out. You saw the clear glass and then them nodding and then fade out. I was like, Give it another second or two, jeez. Is this 1960s version of Cucks? <laughs> I don't know. Lots of, well, Rosa Klebb was watching. She's not... Hey, there's that fucking Bulgar. Looks like Groucho Marx. Yep. <laughs> Fucker. Groucho, Somewhere Groucho. Going He's into Groucho, Habib. <laughs> this is Groucho the Marks. coolest James Bond looks in this movie coming up. When he's got his glasses on. In the fucking cathedral. Or a mosque, yeah, it's a mosque, it would be a cathedral. I'm glad he ditched his fucking hat. I hate that hat he wears. That's not the only shitty thing Sean Connery does. Wears a fucking bowler. But I guess it's to keep his wig on. Yeah. Maybe he just likes bowling. Ha! <laughs> there she is. Yeah, Ooh, still looks good. Damn, dude. You walk up. Do you think she's a step up or a step down from Ursula Andrews? A uh, step up. I'd call it a lateral move. I was going to say a lateral move, too. I think they're equally hot. Yeah. yeah. Now, Ursula Andrews has a better body, but on face and everything else, she's equal. Yeah. Once we get... I think Goldfinger is a step down in terms of attractiveness in the movie, but once we get the Thunderball, we hit the peak. <laughs> the villain, the woman who's evil is hot, the Bond girl is hot, the two that die randomly are hot. Even Money Penny looks pretty good. Like, they're just all, like, firing on all cylinders in that movie. Yep. Well, maybe Sean Connery had it in his contract. He's like, I want fantastic-looking snatch all around me. The thing is, he's married. So? I think his wife would go with him on set. <laughs> you think that stopped him? This, this is a guy that said it's perfectly acceptable to slap a woman if she deserves it. Maybe where he comes from, bitching about your husband fucking around on you, deserves being slapped, and she just never did. Uh, you, you might oh, I love, I love that you can see his breath because it's cold as fuck in there. <laughs> Wasn't the movie supposed to take? Well, that doesn't say what time of year the movie takes place. I well, they, it takes place see, the they, they keep going with like a summery thing because you keep seeing her outside. It's uh, daylight and it's lit up yeah, nicely and everything. Then you're in this like cold ass like mosque, so. There's Red Grunt. Damn it, go go fight a shark. What up, Fritz? I I will in fourteen year, or twelve years. Oh, That'll probably be a movie we never review for this channel. Jaws? I don't like Jaws. <laughs> I don't like sharks. <laughs> oh, so based on that you would give the movie like a half a star out of five because you're you don't like sharks. I've seen the movie. It's a fine movie. I just don't have anything to add to it. Like, I don't enjoy watching it. I don't like a lot of Spielberg movies. Do I want his success? Yeah. Do we want his money? Double, double, so. Yeah. He's a billionaire. I think Oops. we should all convert to Judaism first. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong, sir. You're not wrong. <laughs> that might lose us a good chunk of our channel subscribers, though. But, what if we're Jewish? I got a feeling we got an anti-Semitic group. I'm not sure which one they are, but I'm sure they're in there. <laughs> oh, I, I have faith in our audience that they like people of all nationalities no. and religions. And you got the one guy that's constantly saying that we're just covering up for the reptilians and this and that and the other. <laughs> oh, that guy? I just ignore him at this point. I mean, he may or may not be right. I'm not going to confirm nor deny that fact. One day we'll tell him the truth. Episode 1000. Yeah, well, we'll, 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 we'll tell them the truth. We'll tell them that all of our all of our voices come out of one giant AI computer that's in Area Fifty One right now. Oh, well, for a while there, we had people convinced that fucking Jeff was Dion. <laughs> no, just one. <laughs> the Mad Skimmer. 
Yeah, and since he's not a patron because he's a broke dick and he has to have mommy and daddy give him money even though he's in his 20s, he'll never hear this. That's wrong. This, these all hit YouTube, buddy. Oh, you think he's going to sit there then and listen to this? Fuck that. He, he, he's just going to skim the movie. God damn it, that bowler hat's back. It's like a bowler. <laughs> it's a, a fedora. It's a shitty fedora. He looks like he's going to fucking Switzerland. Maybe. The hills are alive with the sound of Griswold. <laughs> Maybe. Look at this bitch. Maybe he wants to go get some fucking Toblerone. Don't oh, you? Look at her. She looks like an old girl yeah, she, she or a babushka doll. Or something. His hat she sense. went from being hot to not. Real quick. Real quick. That's what bothers me. His hat doesn't match his suit. Yeah, it's fucking like lime. Or it's not lime. It's like a olive green. And he's wearing a gray suit. Yeah, that, that hat is fucking weird. Well, I mean, I guess it kind of matches his tie. I'm not going to get into the fashion faux pas here. His suit is, his tie is blue. The fucking tie is blue! <laughs> the pen is Sorry. Blue. The tie is re- <laughs> 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 Look at this random douchebag. Get the fuck out of here, Sweater McSweaterson. Nobody likes you. Get back to your fucking water polo game, dork. Fucking preps. I do like the part coming up here when M and Money Penny are listening to the tape, and James Bond goes, well, "There's one time. There was this one time when we were in Japan, and then he t- t- turns off the tape." <laughs> <laughs> it that might be a continuity gaffe though, because these the way the books are released is different from the movie order, and. You Only Live Twice takes place before From Rush With Love, I'm pretty sure. So, in rel- in the realm of this movie, he should be talking about the events of You Only Live Twice, but that movie wouldn't come out for another four years. Yeah. yeah. He didn't look very Japanese either. No, I hate that movie. You'll hear me go on. I remember I was watching with Father Slice one time. He goes, he goes oh, this is the one where they fucking dress him up like a Jap. And I'm like, really? And we're watching it, and he goes, he goes does he look like any Jap you've ever seen? I'm like, no. I don't believe so. I remember the first time I saw that movie, and I was just so bored. I was like, he looks like a white dude with eyeliner. Is that an American general? Um, where? In green? In the green right uh, there? No, he looks Russian, though. Yeah, because he looks Russian. But why would a Russian general be in the headquarters of MI6? Well, maybe it's a maybe he's undercover, and that his undercover outfit is the Russian thing. He's going to go run down to the embassy. Oh, okay. Look at Money Penny. How she's so amused. <laughs> M M got a little wild and crazy in Tokyo. <laughs> Too much sake. Too much sake. Dude, she was kind of cute back then. I'm not saying she was as hot as the Bond girls, but she wasn't ugly. No. Wait till uh, a view to a kill. I'll show you a picture of her now. That's one thing I enjoy doing during our James Bond commentaries. I'll talk about stuff and then send you guys the messages. And it's like... Yeah, patrons, for only $100 a month, we'll give you access to those messages. <laughs> Yeah. All the all the weird horrible shit we talk about and say to each other. <laughs> that's just during the commentary. I'll be your best friend. <laughs> yeah. For two thousand dollars a month that says this is Kendo's salary, I will do pretty much anything you want me to. Including anal. Uh, to you to the person, it's maybe catching it, nah, no thanks. I'd rather get a real job. <sighs> Oh, you don't have to take anything off the butt. That's a rule of this channel. Okay, thank God, because I'm like, I... Dude, we're not even going to... I don't want to have to pitch, but I'll do it if I have to. I'm definitely <laughs> not catching. <laughs> we're talking about exorbitant sums of money for that to happen. Like, you know, we're... It's one of those, you know, we're going to pay you guys each $100 million, but you have to peg Kendo once. I'd be like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about that four hundred million. Just think about that four hundred million. Russian clocks are always correct. Jeez. Oh, you got the message. Is that her now? Yeah, uh, that's her last bond. Oh, okay. 
That was a view to a kill. Gotcha. I love that movie. I, ro- I don't ironically love it. I just... It's a lot of fun, even though it's not the best Bond movie. There she's looking back the cute again. It was the fucking <laughs> shitty head, head scarf. You know, once this movie starts rolling, it's a it's got a pretty brisk pace. It doesn't slow down too too much. Yeah. Once we get to the train, it slows down a bit, but that's important to the premise. So all these people thought this was really happening, so these are just extras watching them film a movie. <laughs> nice. God, look at the fire department uniform. <laughs> they look like they're about to fight a war in Russia around 1872. <laughs> Maybe firefighting is fighting war when it comes to Russians. Oh, it's fucking Better rats. It's fighting. It's true. Oh, fucking rats. He hates them. Fucking swords and sorcery. They're douchebags. One day we'll sit down to do the Back to the Future trilogy, and then another day we'll sit down to do the Indiana Jones trilogy. Mm. Don't you dare threaten me with a good time. I actually want to redo the Star Wars trilogy because I was really, like, really drunk the fir- for the first one. <laughs> but it's a story for another day. Easy there, Moz. <clears throat> By the way, that Moz Katana thing I sent you the picture of that I found that pop, I knocked off the shelf and then punted it down the thing. You're my hero. I was really just trying to get ejected from the store. What store was this? Walmart. Walmart. I've never been thrown out of Walmart, so I, I was like, <laughs> I'm desperately trying to find the fucking It Funko Pops. The what? Pennywise ones. Okay. And Walmart has an exclusive that's like just for Walmart. So every time I go buy a Walmart, I stop and I look to see if I can find it. And <clears throat> If you look into one of these windows, Ian Fleming's in them. <laughs> really? Hey, this is the last Bond movie he was alive for. Oh, Wow. Yeah, he died before Golden or Goldfinger. Of course, he died before Goldmine came out. He died before Goldfinger came out. Jeez. Hey, let's wave to people we don't know. Goldfinger. I've always wanted to get on a train like this. You can't anymore. I got the I know. power door thingies. You got to go like one of them old timey trains. You can probably pull that shit off. This looks like the the train in Orient Express. This is. <laughs> Dude, if you, ever, if you ever want to have a really good fun time and get ejected from a country, there's this like really cool like mini steam train thing in Wales. I've been to it once. Mm-hmm. It's like a little eBay thing. You the size of you could easily just fucking bulldoze that thing off the track. Ooh, like you could just run up and it. just fucking shoulder check it, like and cause it to skip the track and fall over. <laughs> a giant from America has derailed a train, killing dozens. Uh, I'll be an eyewitness. Because I like the idea of being an international mischief maker. Like, then I, I tell you what, what happened was I was sitting on the train, right? I was sitting on a train, right? And then this guy come running up, right? <laughs> and, I, and I heard him say, "I'm George, motherfucker from Rampage," right? And so he wants he just runs up and he just like destroys this train, right? <laughs> I think it was cosplaying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's my album. I hate cosplayers. That was a cosplayer. Oh, I wasn't. <laughs> Those head wraps make every woman look old immediately. Like you, you gain fifteen years immediately. <sighs> like he's, she's just ready to plow again. <laughs> I bet you, like, James Bond could have married her, and she would have stuck with him through all the bullshit. Yeah, dude. You could do worse. True. I just love how you can barely hear Kendo in the background fading away. (laughs) He's like, "Uh, uh, 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 uh-uh-uh-uh. I'm still my dildo. How much fun it would be to have you like totally run over like one of those mini trains. <laughs> He's gonna. Uh, first time I he'll, the first thing he'll say to me when he meets me when we go see Star Wars, dude. I can't stop thinking about you in that mini train. <laughs> like, please. 
I love I love see through her nightgown than she was a few minutes ago. I'm gonna draw a really shitty picture of that later because you've seen like my artistic attempts, right? Yeah, attempt is a nice word. <laughs> oh yeah, I am definitely not a fucking artistic person. One time in my fucking art class back in junior high, I had the same teacher for like three years. She gave me like a C something on a thing I worked really hard on. I was like, you know, you should give me a grade based on effort. She goes, if I didn't do that, you wouldn't be getting Cs. Like, oh. oh. <laughs> she goes, you try really hard. You're just not very artistically good. And I'm like, I, I know. I'm going to draw a picture of that later of, Jay, of Jeff just like fucking destroying a like little mini steam train. <laughs> So did he put his pistol in his back pocket? Yeah. If he sits down, he is toast. Yeah, but to say he always, he always has he always has his his uh, his his um his holster, his shoulder holster. He always has that thing on, as far as I, I remember, right? Then there's the one time where he doesn't wear it. Yeah. Yeah, about to say like that's that's the always, that's always the thing you always see like takes off his jacket, takes off his gun, and then he you know, has a drink. Takes off his gun and jacks it. <laughs> and uh, that's called cleaning your gun. That's different. Yeah, it does involve a ramrod. <laughs> Not a car ramrod. It's gonna give you the cancer. This guy looks so weak for being a Russian spy. He's not a very good one. He's just like, oh, please don't hurt me. Maybe he's so later on in the movie. He says that. Yeah. Maybe it's more like, oh, please don't hurt me. Yeah, it was a little more, yeah. it was a little more pitiful. <clears throat> you can almost see up her skirt. <laughs> oh, almost. I'm looking pretty hard. She's a fun Bond girl, unlike uh, Pussy Galore, who's cool, but, you know, a lesbian at first. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget this dude that used to live across the street from me. We would play James Bond Nightfire, and he would call her Pussy Gilmore. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm like, it's Pussy Galore. He's like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> how does, you're in college. How does that not dawn on you? Oh, this was high school, buddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's still, how does that not dawn on exactly. you? Yeah, exactly. Years old. Exactly. No, you, yeah. <laughs> I got yelled at for saying pussy galore too many times because I think my dad realized I was taking the liberties at that point. <laughs> He's as sharp as a tack. I wouldn't care. I'm like, you know what, kids? You can talk about pussy galore. For she galore. She was a good lady. She saved America. I've got Monty Python's Holy Grail now. There's a beer? Yeah. The other night, I apparently spent like 100 bucks at the booze store. <laughs> Brandon and I was out doing some further African-American Friday shopping. And um, we, we went to a few stores. And we went to this uh, hibachi place. Where I guess I drank a bottle of sake. And uh, then we went to like the booze store. And I bought... A couple of bottles of booze and a bunch of like the, the four pack of like craft cans, and one of them was the Monty Python's Holy Grail. It is amber gold ale tempered over burning witches. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's not bad. I also got some Iron Maiden beer, and I was pretty happy about that when I saw it the next morning. I was like, sweet. You guys come out to like scout for the movie. I'll take you to the good booze store. Well, we have a liquor Walmart, so 
good luck with top of that. Well, it's like a liquor Walmart. It's called Friar Tucks, but we call it St. Anky's after the thing from Super Troopers, the St. Anky's. <laughs> oh, stank, yeah, stanky, stanky beer. Yeah, Stanky beer. So we, did, we, we just started calling it that because when they first started putting it up, they didn't have the Friar Tucks on there. It was just the monk thing. And I said something to my buddies like, oh, shit, dude, they're building St. Anky's here. So <laughs> even though it's called Friar Tuck, we just call it Stanky's or St. Anky's instead. And um, they've got shitloads of stuff. Like, Aww. Uh, all sorts of different fucking liquors and beers and wines and all sorts. That's how I got the Akaviit. Eat. It's a very special thing that you cannot get many places. Yeah, right now I'm trying to look for a, a, a gift for somebody. I think it's like Johnny Walker and two glasses in a box. I'm trying to look for that right now. Right, the box set. You should be able to find that. The, they put the red out in the box. That's quite a bit. I bought a box set on Thanksgiving the other day of Jägermeister because it came with the green shot glasses. Ooh, that's it's like nice. I need those in my life. And the <laughs> I can go through almost a bottle of that shit a day if I really try and start early. Oh. Let's see. I'm trying to read the signs on the train, but I don't read French or whatever language that is. Where's my dad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dead! <laughs> You have failed him for the last time, the son of Karen Bay. Really, he's not here. <laughs> hey, there's a random Asian dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was building the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's God maintaining and get it right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. He's still he's still in the union. It doesn't matter. He's it's a good paying job. <laughs> what a shitty sleep. vest. She looks like Squirrel Girl. Bond looks like he's like trying to flirt with her at first, and now he's getting angry. He's looking a little rapey. It's time for Andrew. He's got that wine <laughs> look on his face. <laughs> James Bond doesn't have to rape no woman. They just they always say yes. Now he's going to kick her ass. Yeah, man, that whore. Involved. I'll throw her off a fucking train. Yeah. Throw Tatiana from the train. <laughs> Boom! Right across the face. Damn, Bond. Damn. She took that shit like a pro, though. It's not the first time she's been smacked up the head. Well, she got smacked with a different head. Would you say she got a little knocked up there? <laughs> I'm not going to give you that one there, Loudy. Oh, could do that's that's cold, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can not you can no sell the joke. That's fine, but try to keep the name calling to a minimum, okay? <laughs> <laughs> How to hurt Kendo. In two words, okay, Loudy. That's not as bad as that time the guy that said problem. that, you know, I was the worst part of the show and he liked everybody else, including Phil better, and I'm like, God damn, that one hurts. That guy probably doesn't listen to the show anymore. I think you banned him, but it's not the point. I said, I'll give it I'll give him Jeff and Nick to an extent Phil. Phil. Not that bad. God, it's pretty dark for five 33 in the night. <laughs> Maybe it's winter time. Dude, he, it gets dark like that here at 435. Yeah, maybe they hit fuck. Maybe they just hit yeah, daylight. Same, maybe. Yeah, same here. Like like around 5 o'clock when you, sometimes I leave work, it is just like pitch black. I'm like, damn, this is weird. I was going to message you guys today and be like, is, is it really dark for anyone else or is it just me? <laughs> I'd be like, this is a setup for a bad joke and I'm not going to take it. <laughs> That's cool how you can see the reflection of Red Grant in the window. No, I, I, I always love reflections like that in movies when they're used when they're used properly. Like they, they work really, really well. But you know, when they're done shittily, they of course they, they don't work, but you know. I love how Bond's trying to break the news. Sean Connery's a pretty decent actor, even this early on in his career. Yeah. I would have a hard time keeping a straight face. I just start laughing. Like, when we filmed Porgs Giving, I kept laughing at shit. I was like, this is so fun. Well, I mean, he, he's a spy, and he's done this a lot. So, I mean, him, him telling somebody's dead is probably, like, par for course. He's like, this is what we, this is what I do sometimes. No, but, I mean, this is probably, like, one of Sean Connery's earlier performances. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Let's say this is, like, his seventh or eighth film. Yeah. Probably his second starring role. So, he, he was pretty much all there from the beginning. He was part of it. But, you know, sometimes an actor... <laughs> you know, comes into their own. He was just already there. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, he was on the original Orient Express uh, movie. I think that was years after this. It movie. was. It was It was in the 70s. Back when he had a mustache. <laughs> I 
Yeah, they're doing some day. For, they're doing some day for night once. night stuff. Yeah. Oh no, I've 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 ridden one in a in a third world country before. That's a bad fucking idea. Ew! How bad was it? Uh, the the idea you have in your the, the the mental image you have, ten times worse. I just imagine the smell. Yep, <laughs> that was pretty distinct. <laughs> bo. Yeah, uh, bo and 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 shit. <laughs> And it was really loud, wasn't uh-huh, it? Yep. <laughs> no air conditioning, nothing like that. You just like you were trying to go to sleep when it was too hot. It was, uh, it just didn't work out. It's just a part of the world I don't want to go to. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. I, 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 like even if they're like, hey, twenty million dollars. Well, okay, I'll pay twenty million dollars. <laughs> uh, One million dollars. I'm there with a fucking smile, but I don't want to go. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those things. There's like National Geographic does a really good job of like showing those showing those nice slow motion, colorful shots of those countries, but that's horseshit. <laughs> Turn around, there's literal horseshit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> give me a you know, give me a major Western uh, European city any day. Oh, Red Grant, he's pretty. Uh... Pretty crafty. He's good too. Apparently, he's like an he's an English actor. Um, oh, yeah, Robert Shaw. Yeah, and you know, no, I remember reading that after a while and like knowing that and seeing him in Jaws. I was like, "Geez, man, you really fucking nailed it." Well, he also nailed himself with all that liquor, yeah. <laughs> and he died shortly thereafter. True story. He got eaten by a shark, and then that shark died of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> God, what's up with these shitty fedoras? That was, a set, that was dude. That was that was a time, man. That was a time. That was part of the business suit. You had the suit and the fedora, man. That's how that's how it went down. Yep. You had your suit and your hat. Sometimes your overcoat. I got an overcoat. It's like a trench coat. It's great. I like wearing it to scare people. Oh mine. I, oh mine is made of human skin. Oh, it's even better than mine. Ooh. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's really it's it's, it's it's really warm. It's really really warm. What do you stuff it with? Blood. <laughs> Blood and semen. Could you imagine wearing a coat made of human? Ugh. Yeah, I do it all the time. <laughs> it would smell so bad. <laughs> Mine's attached to me. Yeah, but you can't wear what's attached to you. That's just you. Yeah, you could if you do it right. Like if you shave your hair, it's no longer attached to you. But then you like patch it on and shit. That's just called weird. <laughs> also, a very interesting cartoon from Beavis and Butthead. They tried to give themselves beards. And they cut their finger off. That was something different. Oh, damn it. Wait, hey, baby, I'm back. I'm going to smack you again. <laughs> I love his shitty bleach blonde hair. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, man, it's, it, it's, it's crazy. And I, I love what they're wearing, like, you know, the bad guys are wearing, like, a, a suit that's slightly darker than James Bond's. Same pocket square, almost same shoes and everything. And that's same hat, same, brief, same briefcase. It's in colors for the white hats and black true, hats. True, true, like true. Who do you think does a better job of being the opposite to James Bond? Red Grant, Trevelyan, or Silva from Skyfall? Trevelyan. <sighs> this guy, uh, he, 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 he does it the best because he, he studied him and everything. And he knows mannerisms real well. And I think he's the he is the opposite of him entirely. I'll just go with Trevelyan since they started off together and then <laughs> veered away. <laughs> God, I can't wait to watch that movie. I tried showing what do we got, 15, 15 more? Yeah. I tried showing Doofus the other day, Goldeneye. He didn't know what James Bond was. It's like, all right, we'll watch Goldeneye because that's a good one. Uh, he made about 30 minutes in. He was tapped out. He got bored. Oh, what the fuck? I was like, all right, we'll go sit in the other room and watch something on your phone because I'm not turning this off. How old is this kid? Uh, eight. Yeah, when I was eight, I was in the Golden Eye. It came out when I was 12. So when I was 12, I was in the Golden Eye. Because it came out on videotape in 96. Mm-hmm. And I was eight. Yeah, well, he's part of that new generation that you got to have it all in your face, constantly moving type stuff. Like, oh, well, we got to actually show you stuff to, you know, 
set up plot points and things of that nature. That just goes over their head these days. We're raising a generation of ADD tards. That's true. <laughs> I really loved the train scene on or er, Inspector. Oh yeah. When he fought Batista, that was fucking <laughs> crazy. Did he get Batista bombed? Uh, nobody. You haven't seen that one, I forgot. Batista's the best Bond henchman since Joe's. Dude, oh my god, I, lo- I love him as a henchman. He does so well. I hope he comes back in the next one. Yeah, because he technically didn't die. He just got pulled out of the train. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could, he could be dead. He might not be. He doesn't have to be. There's a chance I might be watching those soon, because... When I got the thing the other day, Father Slice was here when I opened up the box, and he's like, "What's that?" And I was like, "It's my Bond, all the movies that are out." Now. I love, I love, I love, I love this thing he does. Hold on. Oh, the pills. This is so dumb because like his fingers are all all up in there, and you can tell exactly what he's done. Yeah, and, and he's knows. doing it right in front of him too. Like it's right in front of these people. <laughs> they call that the Cosby. <laughs> Because you saw him pull, you saw him reach in his pocket, pull something out, and then like pour the pour the champagne. It's like, dude, come on! Like, even I see that. <laughs> well, we might be watching the San movies. Pellegrino water. So I have James Bond seen it, and that was like one of the images of her drinking that wine. God, I miss playing that. We should play that when we get together. It's old. I'll take it to WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Well, I mean, hey, man, I, I got, I, I got the, uh, I got the, the thing game that needs to be played too. I almost bought that the other day, dude. Oh man, I'm so happy I did. Outpost, Outpost Forty One. Yeah, Outpost Forty. Yeah. yeah. I found it at the Half Price Bookstore for forty bucks. Jeez, man. I got a poker set and a pack of pinochle cards. We can play that. I have James Bond playing cards. I got Naked Lady ones. So do I. Playboy, bottom in Spain, 2005. <laughs> well, you can play some poker and I can teach you guys how to play pinochle. It'll be a great time. Now, if I was a spy, I would have just popped him in the fucking kneecap right oh, now. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I'd be like, I'm going to torture you until you give me what I want. You have fucking ten fingers, ten toes, two eyeballs, two test- a oh. nose, ears, a penis, two testicles, and an asshole before, <laughs> before you can't talk anymore. <laughs> so you tell me what I want right now and I'll make it quick and painless. <laughs> That's kind of terrifying, Jeff. <laughs> oh, I'd be the worst spy. I'd be, I would be so effective, but I would be terrifying. Like when, remember in the uh, later ones where Jaws appears and the guy sees Jaws, he's like I'm fucked. Yeah. When I appear, they know they're fucking. Yeah, dead. he'll just like, your yeah. train over. I will literally knock a train over on you. All right, folks, is how you go full circle. God, that would. S- Wait, his gun just changed from something else to a True, PPK. true, yeah, it was really small now, it's like, you know, a normal normal gun. Well, uh, PPKs aren't that he big. He ain't fucking yeah, but, around though, man. He went right to the temple. Like, yeah, but <laughs> but still though, I mean getting getting hit in the back of the head with a a a tough metal object, yeah, that's gonna fucking hurt. <laughs> no, I thought we were talking about the guns changing. You said it wasn't that big. No, yeah. Well, no, I mean, in in you know, it's supposed to be the Walter PPK, but even getting hit, yeah, getting hit with, regardless of it being a small gun or a big gun, it's a well, gun. Dude, it's with any gun hurts, believe me. Yeah, I've hit myself with them on accident. Jeez. Uh-huh. I was trying to be cool and like do like the spinny thing on like my hand with like a little twenty two revolver my grandpa had, and I went to like spin it up in the air and it slipped off and. Fucking flew back and conked me right in the forehead. <laughs> the worst it. day of sixth grade ever. Jeez. Oh yeah, I totally deserved that. And at the time, I felt hard done. And I said, "I'm like, wow, I was being fucking dumb with that gun. I could have been out just shooting people." The tension is what really makes this scene work. The build up. Yeah. Know? It's like one minute he has him, and you're in the back of your mind. You're like, "How's Bond gonna get out of this?" It just keeps building until a fucking climax where they. This train fight is incredible. I do enjoy the. uh, Even though it's a shittier film, The Spy Who Loved Me has a good train fight where he's fighting Jaws and he. (gasps) Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I even like the train fight at the end of uh, Live and Let Die. Oh, no, that one, the... that one I love because of what happens in the end. Like, oh, my God, with his like, claw hand? Jeez. 
Yeah, when he clips it with a fucking nail clipper, yeah. and he gets stuck, he's like, ah, ah, and then he throws him off the train and his arm stays. jeez. Oh, Yeah, but back to what I would have done to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've always wanted a silenced Walter PPK, a real one. But I'll never get that. I mean, they, they make them. <laughs> they make them. Oh, I know, but not in America legally. You can get it. You just got to know somebody. <laughs> Kendo, I know you. Um. <sighs> I, I, if I am going to buy a gun, it's going to be that one. Just, you know, because... Oh, of course, of course. It's 007's weapon, and it's cool. But would, would you have it to where the, uh, the suppressor is, like, welded on, or would you have it where, where it unscrews? Oh, uh, it would have to unscrew, because if I'm going to buy a pistol like that, I guess I would get a conceal and carry permit. Definitely. I walk around to stores that aren't Toys R Us, and, you know... Have my Walther PPK. Well, you knowing my luck, literally the first day I take it out, like there's a fucking robbery, and I'm like, I'm gonna stop yeah. this. <laughs> I get on the news, they're like, "Sir, you saved twenty people." Yeah, well, check out my podcast, World Class Bullshitters, the epitome <laughs> of pop culture. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I saved twenty people. I want twenty seconds of airtime to talk about my podcast, World Class Bullshitters. <laughs> I'll be there with the GoPro filming it. <laughs> Every time Jeff shoots from my back, World Star. In Missouri, you don't even need a concealed carry permit. As long as you legally can possess a firearm, you're allowed to carry it concealed. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's kind of cool. These people look very unattractive when you see them. Yep. <laughs> it, must, it must look even more, more unattractive than Blu-ray. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just seeing him in the fucking boat, though. Boats and hose. Man goes in the train car. Spies in the train car's car. Our spy. Our train. Good reference. Salsa shark. I'm looking up to buy a Walther PPK. It's gonna probably cost me about seven hundred dollars. Yeah, do you see? I sent you that Snapchat of that Walther PPS or whatever it was that that store I was at the other day, didn't I? Yeah, that was expensive. Yeah, they had a bunch of expensive guns there, but since they were like secondhand, the guy said you could like talk them down. Cause I, my dad literally had to talk me out of buying a Springfield 03 rifle. I've just wanted a Springfield 03 ever since I saw Saving Private Ryan. Oh, shit. That- Here we go. Walther PPK with a threaded barrel. Bid Starting bid of 369 Do it, Jeff. Do it. <laughs> hey, Merry Christmas myself. I bought a gun. I don't have a license for it. <laughs> you have to have a <laughs> license for a gun in Ohio? Yes, you do. <laughs> Pussies. I was actually thinking about going and buying a gun tomorrow just because I'm kind of bored. I feel like treating myself. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't bought a firearm in a while. I'm like, yeah, I kind of really would like to get a pocket pistol for the old cargo shorts. Well, Springfields are nice, man. I know. Are you talking about the pistols or the rifle? Our rifle. Yeah, I know. I was half tempted to drive all the way up to fucking Cabela's again this week and be like, hey, you still got that Springfield 3? I'll give you 600 for it. I shouldn't watch these Bond movies because I go looking at shit I want to buy on the internet. And it's like, huh? Okay, so I listen. Need about six hundred dollars for a gun. patrons. Come on, this, this works call for up the suit. money so that fucking Jeff can buy a suit and a PPK. Yeah, that's all I'll do is run around. <laughs> you know, Jeff's just walking through town all by himself. Da 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 da. It's like no. <laughs> Everyone he, goes, he just got the fucking Bond theme playing over and over out of his phone in his pocket. He's just walking down the street. I'll stop listening to that. This is pretty. This is pretty intense for a '60s fight scene. Oh yeah. Like they're going for the throat. There's fucking suplexes and throws and 
I wonder if they had to censor this for uh, TV. Uh, they may have shortened it for TV. He walks into the Seven Eleven to get a Slurpee. Name's Hicks. Jeff Hicks. Yeah, I'm still on that. <laughs> Jokes on you, Kendo. We don't have Seven Eleven. So okay. We have here. So when you guys, when, how about this? When you come to visit, I'll let you carry a gun. Let me fire a gun. <laughs> I was gonna have you do that anyway. Well, because Phil's like, hey, we'll go shoot a gun out at this farm. We never fucking did. Dude, you come to my house, you, what kind of gun you want to shoot? You want to shoot shotgun, rifle, handgun, big all, handgun, all, handgun? All, all, all of it, it, man. All right? Yeah. I want you to, like, <laughs> teach me. We'll film it. Okay. I'll pop over to Oh, no, there's a, there's a garage wire. Oh, shit. Bond's done. Or did is he? Cut he cut his hand? Yeah, what? before you and Nick get here, I'll just go over to the arsenal that or Father Slice is out. Lost him in the vault. After shit's mine. Nick, he, he cut his hand. He broke his knuckle punching the shit out of this Okay, dude. I guess so, yeah. All right. I don't know. I'm just... Yeah. Right the triceps meet. I feel kind of bad for him right here as he's being choked out because he looks so pitiful. <laughs> but then he's like, he's the fucking bad guy. Show no mercy, Jeff. Yeah, well, at least he didn't get eaten by a shark this time. <laughs> this time. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> on Robert Shaw's career. <laughs> he, he just thought it was a nice little boat trip with two guys he just met. Until. Dun, dun, dun. All right, Kendo. Uh, Cabela's has a Walther PPK brand new. Nice. Six ninety nine. There you go. Buy it. Find it a store near me. There's only one Cabela's near me. It's like an hour away. There's one in Michigan. Oh, wait, no, they, they built one around me about an hour away. Yeah. I got to drive all the way to the north side county of St. Louis to get to the Cabela's. But, hey, Father Slice and I went there the other day and got a meat slicer. And we've already made three pounds of jerky and, a, well, a pound and a half of jerky. You start with more meat than what you end up with. That's how it works and make a jerky work. <laughs> Holy what? This is weird. What? Um, let me send you this. Oh, how convenient. A truck stopped on the tracks. A truck should have been destroyed by that train. You know, it's funny. Me looking up this gun's probably got me on some weird list for my ISP. It's like, <laughs> More than likely. Like, he's looking up a gun. He's looking up this. He looked up... Uh, I'm like, yo, FBI, I don't want a gun. Uh, dude, don't I worry about it. PP the last time I went and bought a gun, the FBI cleared me in about 80 seconds. Oh, I'm not even scared. I have no criminal record. I don't even have a fucking speeding ticket. Yeah, the lady was like, that's like the fastest anybody's been cleared to get a firearm. I'm like, well, <laughs> I have an extremely clean record, and there's a chance that you might have been looking at my dad's name. <laughs> he had the same one. Although I had to get my Soch, so never mind. Wait, why does this Walther PBK only shoot twenty twos? Because it's chambered in twenty two caliber. That's a couple years ago. You used to be able to get used to be able to get a nine. You can get them in different calibers. Yeah, you, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, it's not because the one he uses is seven point six five, but they don't make caliber. that anymore. Or something? Yeah, dude, you can get Walthers in twenty twos, thirty two ACPs, three uh, eighties. You know, 22 is like nothing. Oh, yeah, right? fucking pussies use 22s. I shit you not, I saw a show about a mafia guy that got shot in the head with a 22 and got up and killed the guy. Yeah. Oh. Uh, if you're using a 22 and you're not hunting rabbits or squirrels, you probably aren't going to. I mean, the the beauty of a 22, if you shoot somebody in the head, it goes in, but it doesn't really come out. So it yep. just kind of pinballs around inside the skull and, yep. you know, it turns, it, yeah, it turns their brains into a slushy. But mm. there's no guarantee that that's going to work. That's why I carry a forty-five. Cool. That was the round that was developed specifically to take down people. <laughs> Stopping power in that round. <laughs> Pretty much. We learned our lesson. We learned our lessons in fighting wars with sidearms. We're like, you know, you shoot somebody with a thirty-two. Sometimes it doesn't stop them. You hit one of them bastards with these forty-fives. Usually, you know, heavy bullets, slow muzzle velocity. You know, that's a lot of energy transfer straight to the body. If this movie was made today, when he put her in the bed of roses or whatever, she would have said something about don't. That guy looks like Seth Green, by the way. She would have said something about like, don't touch me. I'm not 
consenting or some other bullshit. Yeah, true, true. Oh, what a silencer. Those should be legal, too. But they're not going Well, no, no, no. They, they, they are legal. You just have to register when you get, whenever you get one. Yeah, but soon you won't have to do that, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Dude, it's really low. Like this is such a flimsy helicopter. It seems like. Oh, dude! It was a. Uh... It crashed like a mash helicopter. When they were fucking filming the movie, it, like crashed into the water with the director, and he almost died. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you build your fucking helicopter with rubber bands and fucking rubber cement. And hopes and dreams. <laughs> and Seth Seth Green's the fucking pilot. <laughs> the whole time, like mother... even before he was born. He, the whole time he's sitting there talking about fucking sketches for a robot chicken, the guy's like, I'm trying to concentrate. I'm flying here, pal. <laughs> when does this thing go on sale? What thing? This gun Nick sent. Oh. After they make silencers legal. Whoa! That was close. I think Whiz by Sean Connery or like a stun double, I guess, and that was really close. What's weird about this is that in the opening credits of Goldfinger, they show clips from the movie, and then they show this clip. That's weird. Like, why would they show, yeah, a clip from the previous movie? It's like this one right here. So. Previously on James Bond. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Helicopter. Last, <laughs> last week on James Bond. <laughs> that would... Man, a James Bond TV show would have been awesome back in the day. Yeah, I don't think you'd be able to pull it off now, man. That, 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 that's a lot of money you'd have to invest in something like that. Yeah, and they'd get some I think you could pull it off. It would be real boring. It, it would have to be like a mainly a BBC show. But no, you're right. It would be really boring. Six episodes. Yeah, it'd be really yeah. But like, well, also understand this. It would be six episodes, but each episode would be like feature length. So you're basically getting like six Bond movies in a season. <laughs> what I would love is if those six episodes would just uh, feed into a movie. Oh God. So like, if you like, the movie could stand on its own, but then if you saw the six episodes. Oh, oh, fuck. oh, money shot. <laughs> what odd editing. <laughs> yeah, that is super odd. And all of a sudden, like, it per- like the helicopter perfectly lands, and it's still blowing up and stuff. <laughs> it was the 60s. People didn't have sense. <laughs> Motherfucker, look at my curled mustache. <laughs> You can get Walter. This shot's weird. Jeff, if you want to get a Walter, you you, you want the all black one that like Bond's got, right? Oh, of okay, course. Yeah, see, those are going to be a little bit more expensive because people want those. So, so you can get one with like a wood handle and like silver steel for probably a lot less than the all black. If I want to pay money for it, I'm getting the you know the legit. Or you can just buy Glocks. They all come in black anyway. <laughs> James Bond doesn't use a Glock. That you know of. Neither does Jeff. I've seen every movie multiple times. Maybe that's his like. Other fucking piece. Maybe he's got more than one. You don't know his life. Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> if, if anyone does, it's me. Yeah, I'm about to say. I mean, I have my replica Walter PPK and P99 on my shelf. Those are fun. They don't do well. They're they're airsoft pistols. I used to be really obsessed with airsoft pistols. I just thought they were so cool. Yeah, I always had real ones. James Bond in his captain hat. <laughs> Better than his baller hat. <laughs> yeah. Here's a weird shot for you, Nick. You talk about the speed up stuff. That's so weird. Like for like a Ooh, quick he's second. He's on the flank. A quick second, like he's just like you know, like jumping off or whatever. At least Bond untied him first. Yeah, that dude, that would suck if he if he wasn't tied if he was still tied up and he let him go because swimming without your arms, you're immediately gonna sink. Like it's bad. Yeah, he may have not made it. <laughs> wow, for twenty four ninety nine, I can get a Walther PPK with a silencer, airsoft pistol. Ooh. Wait, a silencer on an airsoft pistol? Yeah, I mean, it barely felt like anything first. In the first place. 
I'm one of those people that always cuts off the orange tip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I find a lot of mine that, like, are either screwed on or whatever. I always unscrew them or I paint them. Well, what I did is when I got my first Walther PPK, the good one, that I think this looks just as good as. I think I'm going to buy myself this for Christmas. <laughs> just because I want to fuck it, you know. A, a nice one. Well, the thing is, the one that I have is nice, but it's, it's got the metal parts that have kind of corroded over time. I've had it for 14 years. Mm. And uh, I, I just, you know, run around and shoot, you know, my mom when she's, like, doing the laundry. I'm like, hey, mom, watch out. And, like, pop her in the nice. foot. She, she got pissed off when I did it to her one time. <laughs> she's like, ow, that hurt. Oh, God. I'm like, sorry, mom. <laughs> Ooh, I should buy myself a gas blowback airsoft. Uh, what, green gas? Uh, it just says Humorex licensed Walther PPK full-size air, airsoft gas blowback pistol. And it doesn't oh, even have. Oh, that stupid... means no, no, no. That, that means it'll, it'll have the full, the full reaction whenever you pull the trigger. It'll be like it's re- reloading. It'll be like some automatic, um, some automatic gun. Uh, Lame. It's discontinued. Fuck. Lame. Damn, that sucks. Jeff, when you come to town, I'll take you to all the gun shops. We can find you a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy. Hey, mom, that way you don't register it. I don't. I don't mind registering That's it. Point. Point is freedom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The right to bear arms in this fucking state. Call my uncle Ted Nugent. Up. <laughs> I think you have to register shit in Michigan too. There's a couple times I went to a couple places. Like, there one in particular was called Gun Barn, and like they needed a bunch of information and stuff. And I had to register. I was like, ah, fuck. I'm just gonna buy ammunition. And I got. I'll, in no way would I need to uh, take a gun to Michigan. <laughs> nah, I, I mean, I have no problem registering. It's just one of those things. That's like, does the government really need? To... This is a pretty cool climax for this film. Because when Obama comes for I my mean, guns, I need to make that. My <laughs> gosh. Even though he's out of office, that's not the point. <laughs> I was told by not more than a hundred people that the man is a dictator. <laughs> so I don't trust. Him. I, I, I think him. I think him serving his term limit and somebody else getting voted. He's just slow playing us. <laughs> the long con, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His his daughter's gonna come in next. So that's what's gonna happen. That's right, Michelle's coming God for damn you. It, Malia. <laughs> if we didn't have episode one hundred tomorrow to record, I might go out to my local Bass Pro Shop and pick up my Walther. They have it in stock. <laughs> It's like twenty four ninety nine. I, I want it so bad. I was like, I was going to just drive out and pick it up. How far away is your local Bass Pro shops? How far away is your local Bass Pro? Thirty. That's not so bad. You can do it anyway, even with you. <laughs> and there goes all the fucking gas. Shit! How will we ever make it back to London? <laughs> Power of love, baby. Power of love. God, I wish this was back. That's how they killed the show. <laughs> this is such a weird, like, uh, setup, though. They definitely upped the game, though, from Doctor No. And I, like I said, I love Doctor No. I didn't have a. Yeah, what, I wonder if they got, I wonder they got the uh, the shark barrel thing from this movie. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yeah. Jazz. Robert Shaw sitting off the ask. side by the director watching yeah. this. And he's like, I've got a great idea for this shark movie I'm going to make in 10 years. <laughs> what? you got to ask Peter Benchley. Now, watch this coming up. When the one boat explodes, the guy falls off the boat after it like blows up on him. I feel really bad for this. Oh, stuff. man, that sucks. Dude. Right here. Ready? Ah! <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. He's blind. Dude, yeah. That's he, like I, a natural I think, reaction, I think, too. I think, I think he was injured. Yeah, pretty sure he was injured. Like he, yeah, he <laughs> he incurred some damage. <laughs> Dude, I remember the videotape that I rented the first time I saw this. It was the front. The front picture was like Sean Connery aiming the the flare gun. Oh, you had the old like CBS Fox. Yeah, yeah. said after I saw Goldeneye, I became obsessed with it. So I went to the video store to rent James Bond movies. And it's the first one I rented. This was actually one of the later Bond movies I saw. I had seen most of the other ones, and this was like one of the last ones. Yeah, I wanted to go in order, and they didn't have Dr. No, so I went with From Russia with the Love Bone. 
when I got my uh, DVD box set in 2002, this was not included in the first set. Oh, Dr. really? Doctor No and Goldfinger were. That's criminal. Yeah, it was Doctor No, Goldfinger, yeah. Man with the Golden Gun, Spy Who Loved Me, Golden Eye, Tomorrow Never Dies, License to Kill. Maybe Man with the Golden Gun wasn't in there. Maybe it was a. Uh... Let me look that up. It was all those other ones. I don't know if Man with the Golden Gun. Yeah, was, yeah, because but... yeah, because my DVD box said I've got all of them. Oh, and then we had the same. It was a blue box. Set. Uh, no, it was the um, the special edition 007 box sets. There, there was like one. There were there, there were three of them. Yeah, I had that one. The first one was blue, the one was silver, and then the other one was Correct, red. yeah. Man with the Golden Cut. I-, I like that movie enough. It's okay. Like, when the first time I watched it, I thought it was great because I was, like, 14, didn't know any better. But then, as I've gotten older and gone back and watched it a few times, I'm like, eh. All right, yeah. Um, every movie I just said was in there. Sp- God, let's see how much that goes for nowadays. Seventeen dollars. Yeah, you get the midget that kills himself. <laughs> Monsieur, Monsieur, the plane, the plane. I'm gonna hang myself. Ugh. Chester. <laughs> fucking knick knack. Give a dog a bone. Yeah, fucking knick knack. Give that guy a rope. <laughs> Jeez. God, this lady looks even creepier with that shitty fucking white wig. I know. The fact that somebody slept with her bothers me. Now, do you know that for a fact? Yeah, she was married to some, like, real famous dude. Maybe he was just cheating on her the whole time. Well, if she's putting out the quality sex you want, I just don't look at her fucking face. <laughs> right? I think paper bags. Maybe. Yep. I'm going to say they did. Yeah, because plastic was invented until later. Yeah, if you put a plastic... God, he looks like a duck in this scene. If you put a plastic bag over the lady's head, you can solve two problems. Oh my god. There's the rubber. Or not the rubber. <laughs> Sorry, the fucking razor shit. You know what? Plastic bags are thinking of rubber. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know what's funny? When she's backed into a corner, she's still... Fu- she's like... Eh, eh. She fights like shit. Now, in the book, she actually kicks James. Shoot her! And he, and he really? almost... It's, it's assumed that he's dead. And that's why uh, Dr. No starts with him in a hospital. Oh, jeez. So, like, what what happens? I guess he's been, like... I guess he's got the antidote or, antidote or whatever? Yeah, he got kicked, and then the, it's assumed that he dies, and the book ends. And then when the next one comes out, it's like, oh, he survived. Wow. Trick or treat. So Nick, yeah, that's the first box that we both had. Yeah, that was that was so exciting to get. Yeah, because all of them were like you know you could get all of them in those in those box sets and they were there. <laughs> is this every, is this Frank Sinatra? Uh, no, it's a guy named Matt Monroe. Oh, okay, because it sounds like Frank Sinatra. That's why. You know how nerdy I am. With that's this that, that's why I asked. Man. That's why I asked. <laughs> Oh my god, look at that green screen. Well, at least they did it correctly, where like they're going under a bridge and it went dark for a second. Yeah, no, they actually put effort into it, unlike something else we've recently watched with green screen. I would have just fucking filmed this on location and then ADR'd the audio. Because the, the true thing is that they're in a studio and they're still ADRing stuff. It's, it's really dumb. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's like somebody fucked up again in their job. It's like, come on. They had one job. This is the second James Bond film to end on a boat. He's on a boat, motherfucker. <laughs> what the hell? What? Isn't that a weird That is wave? such a weird thing to do. Not quite the end. James Bond will return in the next Ian Fleming thriller, Goldfinger. Next time on James Bond. Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Goldfinger bang. Ooh, yeah, I like that one. <laughs> we will make, we'll make, you know what, Jeff? We'll make a bunch of porn parody starring you. You know, you could be in Doctor Says No. <laughs> you know, Russia with, Russia with Bone, Although that one technically is taken by Trailer Park Boys. You know, Gold Finger Bang. More black. 
Thunder balls. Thunder balls. Is, it's almost a fucking porn. <laughs> I would title, say so. it writes itself. Uh, instead of octo pussy, it'd be octo hyphen pussy. Bang eight chicks. Or the octo mom. How about, co- how about cock to pussy? Ooh, cock to pussy's good. <laughs> that's, that's literally the premise of the film cock The to man pussy, with the you know? golden dong. <laughs> that's yeah. what that's about. <laughs> Too bad the spy who shagged me is already taken. Yeah, we'll just call it the spy who fucked me. <laughs> sure. Right, 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 to point, right to the point. Right to the point. Now these porno parodies have to actually follow the premise of the movie, like pretty accurately, like where we go on location and film stuff. Basically, what it'll be is these movies refilmed with someone else, and then the sex scenes are just like grossly detailed, yeah. and they go on for about forty-five minutes. Never that say is, no again. That is a short credit sequence as well. That is a super short credit sequence. Yeah, they're all like that on these ones because you know the credits are so long in the beginning. For your right. balls only. For your balls only. I like that one. <laughs> I'm just gonna write all these down. I'm gonna spend tomorrow short pr- period of time I have tomorrow where I can do nothing. I- I'm gonna come up with titles for all of these for the porn parodies that probably already exist, but we're gonna do it better. You should just play Uncharted because that's what I've been doing. <laughs> have that. I've been playing GTA Five though. It's a great game, isn't it? Yeah, I had it on 360 the day it came out. I got it, and I played it for about a day. And the next thing I knew, I was just hanging out in the strip club or playing golf and tennis the whole time. I'm like, I have a golf game and a tennis game. I don't have a strip club game, but I could probably trade this back in and get like 50 bucks back. And I did. I sold it for $50 to a friend, and then I picked it up on Black Friday. And I've pretty much spent most of my time going to the strip clubs and taking strippers home to bang. So it's kind of what you need to do is you need to turn on director mode and you can be invincible and kill everything. Oh, nice. Well, folks, this has been episode two of the James Bond files for world class. Double two. Yeah. Double episode two mission two. fight. Two. Missionary. Two. It's, it's the second episode. That's all I can <laughs> say. So we'll be back next month with Goldfinger, probably everyone's favorite bond movie. That's not really a, Big Bond aficionado. Goldfinger's a good movie. I'll talk about it at great lengths during next month's episode. I'm excited to talk about it. I really do enjoy it. I have problems with it, but you'll find out next month. So, Nick, Kendo, anything else you'd like to add before we put this to Check bed? us out in a couple years in Goldfinger Blast. <laughs> uh, please give us your money for Patreon, because um, that's how we can make all these weird movies and videos and stuff. Yeah, people keep saying that they love the ideas that we have and they want to see them, but then they don't financially support us. I mean, it's a little rough around the edges, but I approve of that one. So thanks, folks, for watching, and uh, enjoy the holidays.